cards. I'm not going to buy you any more food. Trust in Jesus Christ, guys. As you can see, there are many preachers around Brixton. God sends people to Brixton. Brixton's a, a place that can hear the gospel. People, it's so important that you get to know your Father in Heaven and the Lord Jesus Christ, guys. It's so important. Your life is precious in the eyes of God. You have life. God has given you life. But you've been distracted. Your, your attention and your focus... Has not, it's not in God's word. It's been distracted by the world, guys. Don't you understand that? God doesn't want you to love this world to the point that you take pleasure in sin. God has given you an amazing way out because we all deserve hell for what we've done in this world, for the way we've lived, the way we live our lives and the sin we commit. So God has given us a way out and that's Jesus Christ. And he commands us, he tells us to to be holy. We can't be holy without the power that God gives us to be holy and that's the anointing. That is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You see God, he gives you an amazing gift when you come to God and repent and believe in your heart in his son Jesus Christ. When God sees your heart is truly repentful and that you love his son and believe in what he did on the cross, God anoints you with the Holy Spirit. He anoints you with the Holy Spirit guys. It's an amazing power. that It's God living in you. That's the promise that God would live within his children. You are a temple. You are a temple. Your body is a temple. And God promises that he will dwell within you. The Holy Spirit will dwell within your temple. When you truly believe in your heart. In Jesus Christ, guys. And what he did on the cross. And true belief is a willingness to pick up your cross and deny yourself. True belief is a, a willingness to obey and believe what God commands you to, to do. You see, a real believer is someone that reads the scriptures and follows Jesus. Not false religion, not organized religion, but you follow Jesus. Jesus, that's who you follow. You don't follow organizations that were created by the devil in order to take you away from God. No, you follow Jesus, because if you follow Jesus, guys, you won't be deceived by religious uh, false preachers and teachers that are in church buildings that want to take your money and then tell you that you're going to heaven, but don't ever actually warn you about the lifestyle that you're living in, the, 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 the lifestyle that you participate in, you see? God is good. He always wants you to be good, but through your pride, you're rebellious. Do you understand, guys? You've got pride inside you. You're rebellious to your father because your father is holy. And God is able to change you and transform you because that's the power of the Holy Spirit. God can change you so that you have a heart for God, so that your mind is in Christ. But this is requirement is what's, re what's required is true repentance. The Bible says that, you know, that true repentance brings godly sorrow, guys, you know. Real, real repentance to your Father in Heaven will have you loving Him, obeying Him, and following Him. You see, Jesus said that the widest road, it, Jesus said that the road is wide that leads to destruction. But He says, narrow is the path that leads to the Kingdom of Heaven, and many people are on that, that road that leads to destruction. Many people are on that road that leads to destruction, guys. They are, they are living for self or they're deceived into false religious systems. It's sad. So many people think that they know God, but they don't know Him. The Bible says that there seems a way that's right unto a man, but to its ends it leads to destruction. You see, many people think that they know God, but the only way you can truly know God, guys, is by following Jesus and His commandments. 
and his commandments and his instructions for your life they are holy because God is holy you see you can't swap Jesus for another God because you're not going to get into heaven through another another way Jesus is the only way guys Jesus is the only way to heaven Jesus is the only way to heaven guys and you have to make sure you have the right Jesus many people unfortunately are preaching the wrong gospel people people are deceived because the Bible warns that many people will come and deceive deceive people into following false religion and, and, and that's sad it's sad that people are not able to follow and obey what Jesus says Jesus said my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow another you see I follow Jesus I follow his commandments I read the Bible I listen to what he says and I do what he says I'm not led by men I'm not led by organizations or church buildings I'm led by the Holy Spirit because when God gives you the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit teaches you you see and now you live for him and not for the religious systems that you've been that you've been deceived into following it's sad it's sad how it's so simple and easy to get salvation but deep down it, it's a heart condition because deep down there has to be a willingness to recognize that you're a sinner that you deserve the pits of hell there has to be a recognize recognition in yourself that you are you are not you're not worthy of the kingdom of heaven you have to be broken you have to you have to say to father I don't I don't deserve your your kingdom you are holy I am I am wretched you have to be broken you have to be broken to the point where you know that you can't do nothing to get into heaven it's only through your faith and belief in the Son of God Jesus Christ that came and demonstrated how to live he demonstrated to everyone how to live a, a, as a holy man of God and he calls you to be holy like your father in heaven and you can be holy like your father in heaven if God gives you the Holy Spirit because if God gives you the Holy Spirit the evidence of your work with God is going to be holiness you're going to demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit guys and the fruits of the Spirit is love joy peace patience goodness faithfulness kindness self-control long-suffering if you work in those mannerisms guys you're working with God because that's the mannerisms of God he is very long-suffering very patient he is very forbearing do you know what the word forbearing means guys forbearing means that if I do you wrong you're not to even take offense if I do you wrong you are to take it and not even complain not not backstab me and go to your friends and talk about me but if I do you a wrong you're to take it and forgive me that's forbearing do you know that God is forbearing with you and me every day when we do wrong when we speak to people in a disrespectful way when we sometimes uh, get agitated and we get frustrated and we speak back to people in a disrespectful way that is that is evil but yet God is forbearing with us because he sees what we're fighting against God sees the kingdom of darkness and he got and God knows that the evil is warring against us evil is constantly warring against us the difference between a man of God and a person that doesn't know the true living God is that we know we're in a fight we know we're in a war we know there is a spiritual fight and a war and we can def we are able to discern evil when evil comes against our minds we can walk in righteousness and holiness because I know the voice of the devil I know when the devil comes and gets into my thoughts and tries to get me to hate or, or dislike another person or tries to get me to be exalted and prideful in my knowledge I'm telling you guys pride destroys and people walk in pride when they should listen to the God and be humble and the more humble you are the more God will raise you up and give you more more knowledge more wisdom more discernment because God is good guys God is not is not this mystery man in the heavens guys God is the all-powerful almighty governing rulership of this world God consists of Father Son and Holy Spirit God consists of Father Son and Holy Spirit Jesus said in John I came forth out of the Father do you understand that Jesus said I came forth out of the Father God is a rulership that consists of Father Son Holy Spirit 
You have a body, a soul, and a spirit. Guys, I was in my bedroom years ago, and I was a saved man, and God allowed me to come out of my body. I hovered over my body in my bedroom, and I looked down at my body on the bed, looking at the computer, while my spirit was outside my body, looking at my body. I'm telling you guys, we are spirit. We are created in the image of God, and God is spirit. Do you know that in Jeremiah chapter 1, God says this to Jeremiah. God said, Jeremiah, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Jeremiah, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Do you understand, guys, we're spirit. God knew us before we were put in bodies. Do you understand? He has tears and he has wheat. He has people that he is going to save and he has people that he's going to use for his destruction. It says in the Bible, I've created vessels for my glory and I've created vessels for my destruction. I am the potter. This is the father. I am the potter and you are the clay. And if you heed to me, if you submit unto me, I will use you powerfully. In Proverbs chapter 16 verse 3, it says this. Commit thy works unto the Lord and he will establish your thoughts. God wrote the Bible, guys. God wrote the Holy Bible because men that established themselves and put themselves under obedience to God, God writ the Bible through them, guys. The Bible, the Holy Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. It's not the Quran. It's not the Catholic Church. It's not Hinduism or Buddhism. It's not Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not Mormons. It's not any of these false practices that don't bring you to Christ Jesus. There are two women in the Bible. There are two spiritual women in the Bible. One is the bride. They are the children of Jesus. They follow Jesus. And the other woman is the whore. She is the whore for a reason. It is the religious men and the institutions that come together and they say this is the way to get to God. But Jesus, he's different from them because they contradict his word. They corrupt his word. They compromise his word. They dilute his word. They water down his word. And his word is no longer effective when you come under the men of the, the men that are in Babylon. The men of the heart, the whore of Babylon. When you come under Jesus, guys, you obey every word. Man shall not live on bread alone, but out of every word that proceeded out of his uh, out of his mouth, guys. Do you understand that? I live according to that. I live according to every word out of God's mouth. And that's his Bible. That's his commandments. That's his instructions. God is powerful. God is powerful and God is able to save. God is powerful. He's able to save and he knows your heart. God knows your heart. And if your heart has got a love for people and a love for the truth and a love for God and you're willing to, to be open minded and, and listen and to, to really understand the, the, the uh, ma magnificence of God and his, and his amazing word if you're open to being taught guys God will reveal himself to you but if you're proud, arrogant, puffed up you know, staying in your coats staying in your coats is not going to save you you have to look God is holy. God doesn't yoke himself with people that are corrupt. He doesn't yoke himself with organizations that are corrupt. It's sad, guys. Come out of Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not of God. They are, they are into military. They're into movies. They are financing and they're making profit off of all kinds of things. It's an organization. It's a corporation. It's a company. Most religions are. Most world religions are. Do you know what Jesus said about religion? This is what Jesus defines religion as. He says to look after the orphans and widows and keep yourself holy. That's what it is. To, to, that's the way God defines religion. It's to look after the orphans and widows and to keep yourself holy. Guys, you can't stay holy or keep yourself holy without God giving you the gift, which is the Holy Spirit. You can act, you can act and behave uh, and you think that you're holy. But you don't know, you don't know the way you behave, the true, you need to examine yourself. The Bible says to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. The Bible says to put yourself under a microscope. Put yourself under a microscope and examine yourself. Please. Many, many people, many people have a, have a, have a form of godliness. The Bible says people have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. 
You see, when the power is given to you, you'll stay faithful and true to the word of God. Do you understand? In Corinthians, I'm not sure what chapter it is now, it's the first Corinthians, it says God allowed heresies to come into the churches and the house churches to prove his people. If you're in a church, or if you're in a house church, and you sit there and the pastor is speaking lies, God knows his people will rebuke the pastor in love. You see, God knows his people will not sit there and allow the false teacher to teach lies. That man will say to that pastor, you were wrong. You are wrong. You spoke lies. That is wrong. You need to you need to come to God in repentance. That's love when you correct. The Bible tells us that we must correct, reprove, and rebuke. There are three things that Christians are afraid to do today because if they do, they're kicked out of churches. What happened to Jesus? How many times was Jesus kicked out of a church? How many times was he kicked out of the synagogue? Because he spoke truth. And if you speak the truth, you'll be removed from these buildings because they are not serving the living God correctly. Some of them have a zeal for God. They have a zeal for God. They have a true zeal for him. But they are mixed up in Babylon. They are mixed up in Babylon. Babylon is deep. In order to understand Babylon, you have to see the signs and the symbols. When you look at the military men that have the wings on their blazers, those wings are Isis. Now those wings come in two forms, and the goddess Isis has two forms the way the wings are spread. Sometimes they're spread straight, and sometimes they're pulled up at the ends. Now if you look at the military uniforms in any country, whether it be Russia, America, China, Japan, France, Germany, you see the same symbolisms. It's the mystery Babylon wings. Some are straight and some are curled up. And it goes back to Babylon. You see the whole world is Babylon, guys. And, uh, and under the world, you've got these religious systems that are Babylonian. But you see, the children of God, the true followers of Jesus, are separate from that. And that's why they're hated. That's why they're persecuted. Because they stand up for truth. And they know not to be deceived. Because they know the voice of the shepherd. They know the voice of their shepherd. My uncle has, used to have sheep in Ireland, guys. He was a farmer. And his sheep, his sheep knew him. If I went into the field and called those sheep, they wouldn't come. But they knew the, they knew the voice of Mikey. They knew the voice of my uncle, and they would come immediately. You see, we, we know the voice of the shepherd. The shepherd is Jesus Christ, and he's given us instructions. He's given us his word so that we're not deceived. God makes it very clear that if you're in his word, abiding in him, you won't be deceived. But you see, many people are deceived because they put their faith in men. They put their faith in organizations that are secretly, they are Masonic, they're Satanists, they are there to deceive the children of God. They are there to take you away from the truth. Jesus is the truth. And his ways, his ways are true, his ways are right. But you see, many people, they think by their good works, it pleases God. But no, what pleases God is obedience. Obedience to the faith. That's what, that's what the Apostle Paul addressed to the churches. He, in the Romans, he says, to the obedient and faithful in Christ Jesus. And at the end of Romans, he ended with the obedient and faithful in Christ Jesus. All through the New Testament, it's to the obedient, to the obedient in the church, to the obedient children of God, to the obedient people in the faith. Obedience means to obey. Obedience means to listen to the instructions, obey them when they are given to you. But most people brush them under the carpet and don't want to know. And they adopt false religion. And they do works and they think their works is going to please God. But God says your works are like filthy rags. He says your works to him are like filthy rags. The only way you can get into heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ. He, he paid the price, he paid the penalty, he died on the cross for our sins guys. But he died so that you may be saved. 
You may be saved. You have to endure. The Bible says it's a race. It's a long race. Your salvation is important. It's a race. You have to endure it to the end. It is a long marathon race, your life. Your life is like a vapor. The Bible says it. You're here today and gone tomorrow. You can be easily deceived and taken to a different, taken a different on a different path. A different path. This is falling away. People that fall away from Jesus, they, they go down a different path. That leads to destruction. But if you stay in Jesus Christ, guys, and you test everything by the word of God, you can't be deceived. It's impossible. The devil cannot deceive you when you're faithful to God by obedience. Because there's no way. Nobody's going to come up to you and tell you this is how it is. You know, I get people all the time telling me, oh no, the, the, the real church is Catholicism. I say, listen, the Bible says no idolatry. Idolatry is wrong in the eyes of God. That means no graven images, no statues, no pictures. God hates it. You, If you really are a man of God and I look at you, I know, I know because Jesus said you will know them by their fruits. If they are representing me, they will, they will line up with my word. They will line up with my commandments. They will line up with what I say. But if you... If you hate God in your heart, that's how you'll behave and act. Because the devil gets into your head, and because you have a weak mind, you speak evil. You don't weigh up the thoughts. Jesus said, an unclean spirit comes out of a man. He goes looking for a place to rest. He finds no rest outside of a man. So he comes back to the man. He sees his house swept and clean, and then he brings in seven more evil spirits worse than the first case. He brings in more evil spirits. Why? Because you allow them. Because you are listening to evil, and then you do. You see, you don't have to go home, and you don't have to do evil. You can actually follow Jesus, guys. You can be a servant of the Almighty. You can be, you can be a true savior. You can be a true son of the living God, or a daughter of the living God, guys. All you need to do is have true faith and belief. That's what it is, guys. True faith and true belief. God doesn't want you to be deceived. God doesn't want you to be deceived, guys. God wants you to, to be saved. God wants you to be saved, guys. God wants you to have the Holy Spirit. It's an amazing gift, guys. No money in the world, no money in the world entice, entice me to, to, to turn away from God. When you, when you have the Holy Spirit, guys, it's amazing. It really is. Because, as I said, you know, you know God, you can hear His voice. If God get, puts the Holy Spirit in you, you can hear His voice. His voice is powerful in you when, when God speaks to you. Each and every one of you can hear God, guys. All of you, all of you can hear God, but you don't know His voice. That's the difference. God speaks to each and every one of you. I'm not different to you. The only difference is I've received His Holy Spirit. But God still speaks to people in this world without the Holy Spirit. But you have to be able to discern His voice. And you can't discern His voice because you don't know Him. But when you know Him, then you'll understand His voice. You'll know His voice. You know? The voice of God. I'll give you an example of the voice of God. You walk past these streets in, in, in winter, in the middle of winter, and you see a man over there. He's freezing cold. It's raining. He's hungry. He's not, he's not abusing alcohol or abusing drugs. He's generally in need of help. You've got a couple hundred quid on you. And instead of going to your event, whatever it is, your concert, or you know, going to the pub or the nightclub, or whatever you're doing with that money, you go up and you give that man that money and say, God bless you. You know, come to Jesus. You know, God loves you. If you were to do that, guys, you would be led by God. Because that's what God does. God is always leading you to do good. This is how you can define God and know God, guys. But people want to be selfish. They want to be lovers of self. They want to they wanna live like the devil. They want to be like their, their, their fallen father, the devil. You see? It's a sad thing when people take pleasure in wickedness. When God is holy... Do you think that if you make it into heaven, guys, that you'll, you'll, somehow, you'll somehow be behaving in the way you behave today? <coughs> heaven, is, heaven is a place of holiness, guys. No one sins in heaven. Do you understand what it is to be full of 100% light, guys? To be full of 100% light is to be 100% loving, 100% long-suffering, 100% forgiving, 100% forbearing, 100% kind, 100% long-suffering, 100% patient, 100% joyful, 100% happiness. You know, to, to be like the angels in heaven, guys, you have to be glorified. That's the only way. 
And we are, we are promised a glorified body because Jesus, he was the first fruits, guys. Jesus rose from the dead. He's the first fruits. He was the first to receive the glorified body. Do you understand, guys? Do you understand what Passover means? Do you understand the, the, the feasts of God, the Father? He has seven feasts, guys. God has seven feasts. The first is Passover. It represents Jesus Christ, the one that was come that was going to come to die for the world. Do you understand that? The second feast on God's holy calendar is called Unleavened Bread. Unleavened Bread, guys, is where basically Jesus had no sin in him. Jesus never sinned. And unleavened bread is a representation of Jesus because when you cook unleavened bread, guys, you don't put yeast in the bread. And yeast is a symbol of sin. You see? So Jesus is that unleavened bread. And then after the feast of unleavened bread, guys, comes the feast of first fruits. Now Jesus, he died on the cross and he rose from the dead and he's the first fruits. After the feast of first fruits, guys, you have the feast of Pentecost. Pentecost is when Jesus says, I go to my Father and I send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. I will send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit to you. That's the feast of Pentecost. That's when we receive, we receive the Holy Spirit, guys. After the feast of Pentecost, we have the feast of trumpets. And we are in trumpets right now, guys. We are in trumpets because trumpets is judgment. Judgments from God on the world and for the Gentiles and the Jews because the gospel has gone out to the world and so we are in that period of trumpets and we're waiting for the last trump to be blown and when the last trump is blown guys Jesus returns do you understand now what's the next feast after trumpets well the next feast after trumpets is the feast of atonement and this is where it gets really good guys because now in atonement God, Jesus Christ, he comes on earth and he administers with his people, the Jews, that rejected him the first time. You see, this is atonement. This is why it's called atonement. Because the people, the true, the true people of God, the Jews, they will now administer with their Messiah, Jesus Christ, when he comes in the heavens and the second coming. And that is a time of great great fruitfulness for God's true people because they will come to the knowledge of the true Messiah and that is called atonement that is for a thousand years that is the kingdom of heaven here on earth guys that is the feast of atonement do you understand we're going through God's prophetic calendar what comes after atonement okay is tabernacles that's when Jesus he puts to death death itself meaning that Jesus destroys darkness those evil spirits behind the veil you can't see Jesus puts them to death and then he hands it all back to his father these are the seven prophetic uh, feasts of God's calendar and we're in trumpets right now guys which is judgments because there's wars famines pestilence and death on this world and in this world that's because there's trumpets being blown that's because the, the people of this world are not obedient to the true gospel of Jesus Christ do you understand? The Bible says that the first will be the last, and the last will be the first. Who is the last to come into the kingdom of heaven? God's people. They are the first to go into the kingdom of heaven with the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The reason why they didn't receive him the first time is because the Gentiles needed to receive the gospel. And so God partially hardened the hearts of his people so that we guys, we could come in. So that we could be, we could be grafted into that tree of life. The tree of life. We can be grafted in now because of Jesus and what he did on the cross. And so Jesus partially hardened his people's hearts so that they wouldn't receive him. So that we could come in. So that we have an opportunity to hear the gospel and to be saved, guys. This is why we come on the streets. This is why we call you to repentance. Because Jesus said, if you do not repent, you will perish. Jesus said, if you do not repent, guys, you will perish in your sins. God is holy. He is a holy, holy, holy God, guys, and he requires you to repent. Repent means to have a change of heart, a change of mind, an attitude and a love for God, a true change of who you are. And the only way you can truly change is when God anoints you. When God anoints you, he delivers you from evil. 
When God anointed me in my bedroom, guys, I immediately gave up the things that I was doing. Do you understand? I was swearing, I was blaspheming and cursing. When God anointed me in my bedroom, it was immediately gone. God delivered me from that evil spirit that was causing me to swear, blaspheme, curse. God delivered me from drunkenness. God delivered me from gambling. God delivered me from porn. God is good, guys. God is able to transform and change you. He is God. He is a deliverer. God delivers you from evil. Evil is a warring against you every hour, every minute of the day. And God is able to deliver you from it so that you're not in bondage to evil. So that you're not in bondage to the sins and the, and the evil that are warring against you guys. You see, it's all been revealed because Adam and Eve, when they were in the garden, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, it was all revealed to them. They were told, very clearly, they were told that you are not to touch from that tree in the middle of the garden, for that is the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. You can take from any other tree, but that tree in the middle of the garden is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the day that you take from it, is the day your eyes will be opened and you will know what I know. And so they were, fortunately, Eve was enticed by, the, by Satan, by Lucifer, to take from the tree. And she took from the tree and she gave to Adam. And their eyes were open. They saw themselves naked. And they then sewed themselves fig leaves. You know? And then God then clothed them with animal skins. You see, guys? And from that day forward, they had been separated from God through sin. And now Jesus is the second Adam. Jesus is the second Adam, guys. You can take one if you want, buddy. Yeah? Jesus is the second Adam. Do you know the first Adam? He calls us to sin. Jesus is the spiritual man. He's the one that brings us and unites us to the Father, guys. Do you understand? Jesus unites us to the Father. God bless you, buddy. This is you? Yeah. Where's well, your ministry? I, I don't have one in that sense. I'm just a Shri preacher. I'm a, you got a lot to learn, but keep up the good work. Well, like I said, I appreciate I've got a lot to learn. We all have to learn. But the things I speak are in the scriptures. I don't go on my own understanding. Yeah, you know? you got you to gotta delve a little bit deeper. I, oh, trust me, I know deeper. I know more than what you think I know. I know the kingdom of darkness. God revealed it to me. I know how it's constructed and how it's put together. That's the first thing God showed me. Yeah, but why, do you want, why would you want to give that to these why? Because, well, why did the, uh, why did Saul, why did Saul murder, kill people to, and bring people to Rome and kill them? And well, then God when, came, well, and God, did God not open his eyes? Yeah, so, because he was a, he was a yeah. devout Jew. That's well, why. not just that, there's, there's people that are wicked and evil, and they repent and they come to God. He wasn't wicked and evil. Well, he was. He was, do, he was doing evil. That's why God came to because he wanted to save him. Yes, what he was, he was, was wrong. Exactly. He believed in and so right. what you said to me initially is why bother telling them? Because God loves them and he wants them to repent. Yeah, but you want to teach them about repentance, not that, about that, evil. That, that evil is, that's later. something God will do. You see, when they are convicted in their hearts, they will then have a love and a desire yeah, to know God, more. They need to, you need to bring them to repentance. It starts with repentance, that's what I say. And you can't do nothing until you, go, until you re repent to God. So because that shows your heart to God. It shows that you have a humble heart. So how to get, how to get the people to repent? But there's also lukewarm, lukewarm Christians here. There's people here that are literally believing in Jesus, but they're lukewarm. And Jesus says, I don't want you lukewarm. I'll puke you out of my mouth. So I preach to three types of people. I preach to the unsaved. I preach to the lukewarm. And I preach to the people who are on fire for Jesus. Because what? that's what God wants. He wants you to preach, warn, and exalt, teach, edify, encourage, lift up. And it's not me, buddy. It's the Holy Spirit. I give it all to the Holy yeah, Spirit. But it's a, of course it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But how do you get the people into the Holy Spirit? That's down to God. Because God knows the hearts of people. Yeah, but so that's what you're supposed to bring them to. That's what, you, that's what your purpose is. The preaching is. brings. The preaching does. It's the preaching of the cross that brings people to repentance. That's, that's to what the Bible them. says. You want to bring I mean, if you so, if you know so much, then why don't you do it? Perhaps you see, you see, it's good to be a critic, but no, if you're not willing to go I'm, out and do it yourself, then I don't really take your advice. I'm doing it now with the people. Yeah, you're you're, 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 ju you're judging a man of God that's already walking in the spirit. I'm not judging you. I'm trying to help. But you're help. You're getting angry and upset. No, see, that's that's of the no, devil. You see, no. when you get like that, you're letting the devil get into your head. The Bible says to show love and patience. Is that patience? To get aggravated and frustrated. That's of the devil. Do you understand how dark uh, we can be? Just through conversation. The devil 
rules against you, and you can get frustrated to the point where you get agi you get ag agitated so much that you are aggressive in speech, no, and that is evil. That's need, evil. You need humility. Yeah, well, show it. Show it, because I'm Moses, telling you how to get to heaven. Moses we, was a meek man. He was. And he, and he was, and he taught Pharaoh. Yes. He went, but he Moses did. also he made mistakes. Moses made mistakes as well, didn't he? Basically everybody. Yes, exactly. Does. And that's the thing. God is able to bring you to truth if you just love him enough and be patient enough. It's no one there, no I don't hate anybody. I love people because God says to love them. You know, Jesus said, you know, forgive them, Father, they know what no they know not what they do. When he when they nailed him to the cross, the Romans nailed him to the cross, he understood, he looked behind them and he knew the evil that they were that they were under. They were under a powerful evil force that was causing them to do that. They could, if they wanted to, say, no, I reject, I'm not doing it. But they were led to do evil because evil is powerful. When evil comes against you, you can't fight it. It's so powerful, guys. The only one that can protect you from evil is God. That's, that's why, why you need spirit. Yes, that's spirit, why you need the Holy Spirit. Spirit, soul, and body. Yeah, well, that's so everybody's got, you know. Yeah, but so you want to get people their conscious you want to move their conscious to the spirit not the but not the and that's and what that's why you read the bible because when you read the bible the bible tells you about the carnal mind the bible says the carnal mind is that enmity against god the people of the world are too focused on the world they're too distracted by the things of the world it's called temptation and uh, they're not interested in god's word but sometimes through the preaching on the street and the fear of god men depart from evil the bible says that fear of god Men and women depart from evil. Not everybody, some. Because God is not going to save everybody, only you, those that have ears. You should go into the churches and teach the Well, church. the churches, you and me, when we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you see? where are the people congregating? Where do they congregate? They're lukewarm in those churches. That's why you got to make them when strong. I go, when I go in, they kick me out. Just like they kick Jesus out. Yeah. You see, you can't have a word. You can't have a word with a pastor in a church because he's prideful. And Jesus says you have to be the most humble person when you're running a church. Jesus said you have to be the most humble. The, you have to be the lowest of the low. But what we see in the churches today is we see proud people, and that's not the way. Jesus said you were to. He gave you an, an example by washing the feet. That was an example. What Jesus is saying, if I wash the feet of these people, you should do even more. Meaning that you have to be meek, humble, and you need to be willing to listen when someone corrects you. And when someone brings truth to you. But these pastors don't do that. What they do is they you get, the they the get angry and they kick you out of their churches. Yeah, Just like they, they kick them. Jesus out. Just like they kick anybody out. You see, man of, two men of Jesus, they get, they get hated. They get hated and despised by people in religion. Religious people are the worst because they hate the children of God. Because we stand for the, the truth. We stand for God's righteous, holy word. And uh, religious men and religious women, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of this. It's down to you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, it's down to you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Please, guys, I, I preach to you because I generally do care for you. I don't want you... I don't want you to die in your sins, guys. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a living God, guys. It's a terrible thing to, to fall into the hands of a living God when you take your last breath, guys, and you come out of your body, and you come out of your body in spirit, and you, you wonder why you're in darkness. Why am I in darkness? What am I doing in a dark place? What am I doing in this evil place, this dark place that's separated from God, who's light? And the reason why people go to darkness is because they reject the word of God. They reject the gospel. They reject the true saviour of the world. They do not want to listen. They're proud. They'll stay in their false religion. They think that they're pleasing God with what they're doing, but they're not. Because they don't understand that God's word trumps. God's word trumps men's imp impression and men's understanding when it comes to the gospel. We are to surrender fully unto Jesus. He teaches us. The Holy Spirit teaches us all things. If we follow Jesus, we will not be deceived. If we put our faith and trust in men and religious men, they will lead you astray. Because they will always contradict the Bible. They will always contradict it. They will always water down and dilute the word of God. This is why you need to be in Jesus, because those that are in Jesus, they suffer. They suffer. I get always attacked when I preach on the streets, and I don't preach hate. 
I, pray, I get attacked by people because they are filled up. Many of them are filled up with evil spirits. And evil spirits attack me because the evil spirits in them don't want me to tell you the truth. There is an evil that is present that you can't see and it wars against you. And it influences you to attack the children of God. And I can't, I, I can deal with it. I'm able to deal with it because I know what's behind it. But guys, many of you don't really, you don't really meditate and examine God's word and listen to God's word. God is telling us, our, our fight is not in flesh and blood. Our fight is in the spirit. It's in the spirit realm where the, where the, the dark spirits that are there, they are warring against you. And they are causing you to be deceived through false religion. They're causing you to be in contention and arguments and coming against one another all the time. We fight not against flesh and blood. We're fighting against evil. Evil is warring against us. We need to be united back to the Father through Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's the second Adam, guys. Put your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus, guys. Open up the Word of God. The Bible is powerful. The Bible is powerful. It says the, the Scriptures. It says that the Word of God is, is sharper. It's, the Word of God is, is sharp. Is sharp. It's uh, as sharp as the two swords. And, uh, and it pierces the heart. And it really convicts. You see, God's words, they convict you. Why? Because, it, you know, because He wants you to be corrected. God doesn't want you to be deceived. God's words, they really do, they, they convict you. God's words convict you. That's what they're supposed to do, guys. God's words, they convict. And they are convicting you because God says, I discipline those that I love. That's why the word of God that's why the word of God disciplines you. Do you know the Bible says I think it's in Ezekiel or Isaiah? It says it says this, it says the word of God is is honey in your mouth, but it's bitter in your stomach. The reason why that saying is true, because when you read the words of God, when you read the scriptures, when you read the commandments, when you read the instructions, they upset you. They upset you because it's bitter in your stomach. Because you know that God is holy and he's calling you to live a lifestyle that you don't want to live. Because you enjoy sin. You enjoy rebellion. You enjoy transgressing transgressing God's law. You enjoy sinning against God. So you don't want to come conform to his ways. But through the preaching, guys, you recognize and you repent. And you say, sorry, not everybody. Humble people like you, sir. You know, God bless you, man. You know, stay in the Bible, keep reading the Bible, come out of the Catholic Church. I know many are deceived in that church system. You see, it's the whore of Babylon. It's a, it's a, a false religious system. And there's two women, like I said, the whore and the bride. The bride follow Jesus. The bride follow Jesus and the whore of Babylon is a spiritual whore that is, it, that is bringing all false religion together under the devil and it's going to deceive many. Many will fall away in the last days because they will not understand. They won't understand. But God is very simple in his words. He's, he's very clear in his words, guys. You believe God. Don't believe man. Believe God. Test everything I say. Test it by the word of God, guys. And you'll find that what I say is true. Because I am a... I fear God. I fear God. So I would never lie to you, guys. I fear God. I'll tell you the truth. That's what you need. In the last days, you need people to tell you the truth. Not lies. Not tickle your ears and tell you you're going to heaven. I'm going to tell you, you can get to heaven, but you have to do it Jesus' way. You have to follow Jesus. You have to pick up your cross, as he says. But look, the first thing, as I say, guys, always, is that you must repent. You repent. You say sorry, and you truly mean it to God. And you say, Father, please anoint me, powerfully anoint me with the Holy Spirit. And then you, then you start to pick up your cross and deny yourself. Because that's a life of holiness. That's what God does. He sanctifies. When God is sanctifying you, he's, he's convicting you of your life. And he's, start, he's, starting, to, he's starting to work in your life and, and better you. He's, he's, he's making you into a, a man of God, a woman of God. You become a saint, guys, when you follow Jesus. You're a saint, a living saint. You know, you don't have to be dead 100, 200, 300 years. When you follow Jesus, you're a saint, guys. It's so amazing, guys. You know, let me tell you some good news. God says this in the Bible, New Testament. He says, you have no idea what's in store for those that love me. That's what God the Father says to you, guys. He says, you have no idea what's in store for those that love me. 
Jesus says, I go to prepare a place, and if it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you, so that where, when I come, I will receive you unto myself. I'm telling you guys, the sufferings of this world and the problems of this world that you may endure is nothing compared to the riches of heaven and the amazing things in heaven, guys. That's what it is to have faith. Faith is a beautiful gift that God gives you. Did you know that? You can't walk by and just believe. God has to give you faith. You know, God has to give you faith. Faith is a gift and God gives you that faith. He gives you that at faith so that you can believe so that he so that he can soften your heart to the gospel and without faith you can't believe i can talk to you for hours and hours and you'll never believe if you don't have the gift of faith and god gives it to you when you're humble when you're hearing and listening and and saying sorry and saying father god i am a sinner i deserve hell i believe in jesus help me with my belief that's a love, that's a lovely thing to say to god oh father help me with my belief Help me to understand Jesus more. Help me with my belief. Do you not think God will answer your prayers? Do you not think God will reveal himself to you when you say things like that in a humble way to him? He's your father in heaven, guys. He gave you life. No matter what side you're on, if you're on the left-hand side, you are tears. I was a tear before I came to Jesus. I was a goat before I came to Jesus. So you can change. You can change. You don't have to be on the left. You can be on the right. You can be on the, in the kingdom of heaven for Jesus. Today you might be a goat. Today you might be a tear. Tomorrow, next week, next month, you could be a sheep. You could be a child of God. You can be a servant of the Most High. You can stand proud in your faith and know that it's true. Even through suffering. Even through persecution. Even through prison. Even through death. That's what you'll do. Because you see, God promises. And I know this for a fact, guys, because he did it to me. The Bible says God will manifest himself unto those that love him. The God of the Bible, the God of Israel, will manifest himself unto those that love him. Do you understand that, guys, people of Brixton? You're nice people. Most of the time, I get positive things from the people of Brixton. Even though they may not be fully in agreement, they don't, ha they don't heckle. They don't heckle as much. And I know many of you people are not in the faith, but you are... You are very long-suffering and forbearing. And I pray that God will pierce your hearts and, and, will re and will reveal himself to you. Because it's amazing. It's the best gift in the world, guys. No money can buy the Holy Spirit. No money in the world can buy the Holy Spirit, guys. It doesn't matter how rich and how powerful you are. No money in the world can buy the Holy Spirit. Please, guys. Trust in Jesus Christ. He is the, he is our, he is the author and the finisher of our faith, guys. Oh, God is good. God reveals himself to those he loves, guys. It's faith. It starts with faith, but then God reveals. God doesn't keep you in the dark. He's amazing. He is true. He's the God of Israel. He could take away your smoking. I don't, I've never smoked, but God could do that. God could take away alcohol, gambling. He could take away all kinds of evil. That's what he can do. He transformed me and changed me massively. I, I used to gamble heavily. Irish people love the horses. I gambled lots, guys. I went to work one day, and I'd done £4,000 in the space of an hour on the horses at work. God took that from me immediately when I said sorry, when I repented. That gambling was gone. Ah, I wish I'd found God ten years ago. I'd been pretty rich. I'd have my own house by now. But I was a big gambler. Immediately, when I repented and believed in my heart, God delivered me from that gambling. That was an evil, demonic spirit. I'm telling you guys, God delivered me from my filthy language. Every word. If you came up to me 10 years ago, had a conversation with me, all my words would be F, 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 and I blaspheme God all the time. Overnight, guys, immediately, God took that from me. It's amazing. God is powerful. He, he is there, and he recognizes and sees your struggles. He sees your life. But remember Job. Remember Jesus. He suffered. Remember Job. The book of Job is a great... A great book to remember, because Job suffered tremendously. But did he curse God? No, he didn't. Did Job lose everything? He did. Job lost everything. He lost his, he lost his children. He lost his livelihood. He lost his health. But he did not curse God. He lost his friends. He did not curse God, guys. So God is telling you, in this life, there's going to be struggles. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be suffering. But do not curse God for it, because there is a reason behind it. It betters you. 
it does better you. When you suffer, something happens where you're bettered. God makes you better through your suffering. Please, guys. I love you guys. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to go to that dark, evil place. I really don't want you to go there, please, guys. My, my, my people are perishing through lack of knowledge. The Bible says it. My people perish through lack of knowledge. No, knowledge is the word of God. It's his powerful words, his scriptures. I say many times to people, even though we're in 2023, uh, do you, anybody here ever remember Popeye? Anybody here remember Popeye the sailor? Well, Popeye the sailor, he ate spinach. And when he ate spinach, he became strong. When, script, when the Christians read their scriptures, they become strong in the spirit. Do you understand that? When you read the Bible, you become strong in spirit. Just like Popeye eating his spinach, he gets strong, powerful. When a Christian is in his Bible, meditating on the word, studying the word, reading the scriptures, he is strong in the spirit. And that's why God wants you. Because when you're strong in the spirit, you're able to stand in times of darkness, in times of suffering. You will be able to stand because your foundation is on the rock. Your foundation is on the rock, guys. It's not set on a false foundation. It's on the rock. And Jesus is the rock. It isn't Peter. It's Jesus. Jesus is the head of the church, not Peter. Peter, actually, he was, he was, he was for the circumcised. Peter was called to the Jews. Paul was called to the Gentiles, as the Bible says. Paul's ministry was to the Gentiles. Peter's ministry was for the Jews. Do you understand, guys? James's bro uh, James, the brother of Jesus and Peter, they were called for the ministry of the Jews. Whereas Peter, sorry, as, uh, where, where Paul and Barnabas and Silas and Timothy and many others, they were called for the ministry of the Gentiles. You see, guys, God is good. He is doing his work. And he is able to pierce hearts and soften hearts. Many walk by, some are convicted, some people are convicted because of the way they live and they know that their life, they know that their life is not according to God, it's not according to his ways. And some do get convicted. Sometimes you go home and you meditate and think on the preaching that you heard. Sometimes you just get distracted and you're not bothered and you don't care and you walk away. But the word of God, the Bible says the word of God it never comes back void. The word of God never comes back void. Somebody always gets convicted. Somebody always gets convicted in the spirit. Because that's the power of God's word. It stirs you up. It gets you to analyze, to meditate on his word. It gets you to examine yourself. You know, this is what it is. When you are walking in disobedience, and you know you are, you're, you're, you're constantly being told by God in your spirit, in your heart. Yeah, that to not to do those things when you do things that you know is wrong and you know you get the conviction you know you get that conviction when you when you take hard drugs when you're getting drunk out of your mind you're getting convicted by God because God is telling you not to do it but you're not listening to his convictions you're not listening to the discipline of God guys and that's what God says he turns you over to the devil God turns you over to a reprobate mind after a after many times him calling you and telling you to get right, he turns you over to the devil. Where you have a reprobate mind. So now you have the mind of the beast. Now you get behind the agendas of the world. Now you're for the things that are wicked in the eyes of God. Do you not understand? When you're like that, guys, you need to be broken. You need to be humble. You need to cry out to God and say, Father God, I am a wicked sinner. I have done things and I have supported things that are wicked and, and evil in your eyes. Please forgive me. Please, Father God. Please anoint me. Please anoint me. I believe in your son. I want to believe. Help me to believe. That's what it is, guys. Be humble. Be humble. Be humble. Lady, the gospel is the good news. Do not, do not hinder the gospel. It's not. It's not. It's never a waste. I've been transformed and changed. You walk in darkness because you don't know God. Look at you. You're 60 years age, 60 years of age or, or more, and you're doing that. That's disgusting. What type of a woman are you? 60 something years of age, and she's doing that. Are you for real? That's for your generation of people. That's disgusting. I get that from an 18 year old or a 20 year old, but from a woman over 65 or something years of age, she's doing hand gestures. It's disgusting.
boys, look at yourselves in the mirror. Take a look at yourself. Look at the way you're being, you're acting and behaving. Do you understand there's an evil force tempting you to do this? Evil leads you to do evil, and you are in agreement with it. When an evil spirit comes in and wars against you and influences you, you have one of two choices. You can either agree with it and go with it, or you can go, that's evil, I reject that. I'm sorry. If you do an evil gesture, you walk by and you give me the big finger, you can then say sorry in your spirit to God and say, that was wrong. How did I get overcome by the devil like that? I'm so sorry, Father, please forgive me. That is good. To for to even if you do the evil gesture, it gesture, if you say sorry, God forgives you. Please, so many people, they, they act before they think. They act before they think, guys. Please. Jesus is truth. Jesus is life. He is the only way. I don't want you to die in your sins, guys. God doesn't care too much about the body. He really doesn't. It's the spirit and the soul. That's where God loves. Because you see, when God takes the body, and he can take the body any time, you don't, you're, not, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. God can take the body any time, guys. But it's the soul and the spirit. That's, who, that's what God wants, you see. God wants the soul and the spirit with him. He doesn't want that soul and spirit to go to hell. He wants you in his kingdom. God is not too fussed about the body, guys. All you have to do is read the Bible, the Old Testament, and you'll see that. Now, I'll give you a quick story, a small story in the Bible. It's in the book of Kings. And uh, this king was, this, this prophet, he was a man of God. He wasn't named. He was a prophet. And he was told to go to Jeroboam, who was a king of the northern uh, Israel, Samaria. He was the king in Samaria. And this man of God, the prophet, was told by God to go to Samaria and to warn the king and rebuke the king for the evils that he was doing. Because he was, he was creating false gods and he was causing the people of Samaria, he was causing the people of Samaria to go into, to go into idolatry, to, to, to worship false gods. And so God the Father sent a holy man of God to rebuke him. And he went and rebuked him. And then the man, the man that Jeroboam, he put his hand out and immediately his hand was frozen. It was frozen, he couldn't pull it back. And he said, man of God, man of God, pray, pray that my hand be healed. And the man of God prayed and his hand was healed. And so the man of God proclaimed a prophecy on Jeroboam and what he was doing. And then the man of God was told by God, whatever you do, do not stay in Samaria, but continue and go straight back to, Jer to Jerusalem. Do not, do not stay in Samaria, return immediately to, to Jerusalem. So the man was returning to Jerusalem, guys, and he was sitting under a tree, and a false prophet got wind of what this man had done. And a false prophet, he then came up to the man of God under the tree, and he said, an angel appeared to me and told me to bring you back to my house. And the man of God, he went with that man, that false prophet, back to his house. And he sat down in that man's house and he started to eat with that man. And then that man, that false prophet, stood up and rebuked the man of God and said, Were you not told to go immediately back to Jerusalem? Why did you disobey? And the man of God got up off that table and he got on his donkey and he got out of there very quickly. And God raised up a lion and killed that man. And the lion was there beside the body along with the donkey. The lion and the donkey together, by the body. And I'm telling you, what I'm saying is, this was a man of God and he disobeyed God. And because of his disobedience, God took his life. But he spared his eternal life. But he took his life in this world. God's not too worried about your body in this world. God says, don't worry, don't fear the one that kills the body. God says, don't fear the one that kills the body. Fear the one that has power to cast the body and soul into the lake of fire, guys. That's who you should fear. Fear your Father in heaven, guys. Fear your Father in heaven. Fear your Father in heaven, guys. Because he is, he is holy, he is the true God. And he is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Three that bear record, but they are all one in agreement, guys. Oh yeah. That guy is he's he always comes against us. He's a scaffolder. He constantly argues. You could be there for six hours arguing with that guy. You'll never get him to change, buddy. We've tried, and he's so rebellious in his mind. You know? He comes Oh yeah, the whole lot, yeah, there's so many people. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you've got, would you do me a favour and get me a bottle of Diet Coke? And, and, and that, God, God bless you, I, my mouth is dry. Yeah, guys, please. I know Jesus is true, he's like, I love you guys, I don't want you to go to hell. You are, your life is precious, guys. You live every day, but you don't live every day for God. You're living for self. That's the trick, that's the snare. You live for self, guys. Living for self is good while you're alive and breathing, but once you die, guys, once you come out of your body and spirit, where are you going? It's sad. I'm telling you, hell is real. Hell is real. It's a real place. Suffering. Gnashing a teeth where the worm never dies and the, and the flames are, are never quenched, guys. It's a real place, guys. I don't want you to go, go there, Brixton. I don't want you to go there, people of Brixton. I don't want you to go to that place of darkness and torment. I want you to repent. I want you to repent so badly. I want you to receive His Holy Spirit. Believing. To believe in something is, a, is enough to give your life. To truly believe in something is enough to give up your life. To change your life. That's true belief, guys. So many people walk by and they say they believe, but they don't really believe in their hearts because, as Isaiah says, they confess me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Isaiah saw. Uh, Isaiah knew. Isaiah knew. He, he saw. He knew. He knew the hearts of people. He knew because he was in a generation himself that was, again, similar. People were saying they loved God, but they were doing all evil. They were doing all evil. They were worshipping false gods, Babylonian gods. They were not worshipping the God of Israel. They chose to worship and serve the gods of Baal, the gods of Asherah, the Babylonian gods, the gods that this world today worships, guys. The gods that the, the world today worships the same gods as they did 4,000 years ago. Please, guys, turn to Jesus and live. Turn to Jesus and live, guys. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through the Son. The Son of God, Jesus Christ. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. Everything. Everything. He created all things, guys. All things were created by the, by the Son of the living God. Jesus. He created all things. Everything was created for Him and by Him and everything. He even created the angels. Jesus, He created the angels, guys. Lucifer rebelled against God and we know that God is three Father, Son and Holy Spirit Lucifer rebelled against the Son of God Jesus Christ when he was in heaven with his Father he didn't want to he didn't want to serve the, the Godhead you know everybody today has a problem with Jesus you understand if you speak to any religious system they'll always acknowledge God they don't have a problem saying God but they don't want to acknowledge the Son they don't want to give honor to the Son, Jesus. The Bible says to honor the Son. To honor the Son. And I don't believe in heaven that, that all the fallen angels, they didn't honor Jesus. They didn't honor Him. This is why there was rebellion in heaven. Because of pride. Please, guys. Just as it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. You know, God revealed Himself to His angels in heaven. And then, and then He came down on, on earth and took on the form of flesh. And then what happened? People again did not honor the Son. They didn't honor the Son of God. Please guys, turn to Jesus and live. He is the way, the truth, and the life. My people perish through lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, guys. You know, faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God, guys. If you don't have faith, you can't know God. You know, it's impossible for you to even stand in and have an argument or a discussion about God when you don't know Him. It's impossible. God's not revealed Himself to you. You can't stand and have a... Okay, God bless. You can't... Cheers. You can't, you can't really have a discussion, guys. It's impossible. Please, guys, trust in Jesus. Love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He is the way, the truth, and the life. God is able to do a marvelous work in your life, guys. God can really change you, transform you. He can set you apart. That's what God does. He sets you apart like holy people. He sets you apart. Apart from what? Apart from the world. You see, that's what God says. Come out of the world and I'll receive you. You see, God... He drew his people out of Egypt. Egypt is a form of the world. And he drew his people out and he gave them the law. He gave them the law and he drew them, he drew them out of Egypt and he, and he was their God in the wilderness for 40 years in the wilderness. But many complained, many moaned and complained in the wilderness. And so they didn't come into the promised land. They didn't come in. The only two that came in was Joshua and Caleb. 
Joshua and Caleb were the only two out of, the will, out of those in the wilderness that came in. And the children of those that were disbelieving and that did not have faith and did not believe the things of God. They came in. But those that were complaining and they, they died in the wilderness, guys. God didn't bring them into the promised land. You see? You have to believe in Jesus. You have to believe in what he says. You have to do the things he calls you to do. The Bible says not to just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer. But do the, you know, you need the power. You need the anointing before you do the works. Otherwise your works are just on yourself. You need to be anointed. You, you need to make sure that you've got the Holy Spirit so that God is doing the work in you. You see, all glory goes to God. God takes, I, God, the things I do, I give it to God. I, he, he takes the glory. I don't take it. I know that I'm a vessel for his honor. I'm a vessel for God and I'm giving him the glory. He strengthens me, he encourages me, he motivates me to come out on the streets. He motivates me to come out on the streets and preach to you. It's, it's his strength that I do it in and I give all glory to him because he is God and he deserves it. I'm just a vessel either for his glory or I'm a vessel for his destruction. It's up to you guys. Work out your you know, salvation with fear and trembling for God. He is a long-suffering and patient and holy God. He has great, great long-suffering and patience, but there's coming a day and an hour that you don't, you don't want to see. It's a time of judgment, a time of judgment for the world because God is upset with the world because the world has darkened, evil has increased, sin has increased, and people are not rejecting, people are not rebuking evil, people are going along with evil. God is testing your hearts and minds and you're failing. You're failing to identify evil when it comes against you. Instead, you embrace it, you go along with it. Your little children at school, they're being corrupted in their minds, told to be perverted and set. They're, not, they're, te they're teaching little children sexual things at school at the age of four and five and six they shouldn't do. They're attacking your children. That's the devil. He attacks your children, guys. This is evil. The world you're living in is evil, guys. You, you've got to be able to see it. Don't be ignorant. Don't bury your head in the sand. Recognize the evil. God wants you to recognize the evil so that you come to him and you have salvation in his son. That's the whole point. Evil is going to get stronger. It's going to increase. It's going to get darker. And the more darker, the more evil it gets, guys. Are you going to just sit back and go with the flow? Are you going to go with it? Are you going to participate in evil when evil covers the face of this earth? Or are you going to stand up and say, no, I don't agree with that. That's wrong. In the eyes of God, that's wrong. And yes, you'll suffer, but you will not perish. You will not perish, guys, when you stand up for God. You'll perish if you love the world. You'll perish if you love the beast. The world is a beast, guys. And if you take the mark of the beast, if you take the, the world, if you agree with the world, if you agree with the agendas of the world, you've taken the mark of the beast in your hearts, guys. Because it is wicked and evil in every way. And God is good and is long-suffering and patient wanting you to come to salvation wanting to transform and change you and he can if your heart is true if your heart is repentful as I said Jesus said many times repent or perish it starts with repentance the kingdom of heaven is within you guys because God put life in you if you didn't have a spirit in you right now a spirit in you you couldn't live God gives you life by breathing the spirit into you when you're in your mother's womb you know Life begins when the spirit enters in the, into the child, into, into the baby in the womb of a woman. That's when, it, that's when life begins because God puts the spirit into that little child that's not even formed yet. Yeah, so many people today, they don't care about nothing only themselves. It's all about money. It's all about selfishness and greed, pleasure. This world is darker than guys. It's darkened and if you spend time with the God of the Bible, the God of Israel, believing in his word, believing in his son, obeying and following his commandments, you know, being a servant, being a submissive servant, you know, God will anoint you. He will anoint you powerfully. But there's a, there's, there's a, there's a real rebellion in hearts of people where they don't want it. It's, it's just, it's, it's nothing is... Everything is the same. Nothing is different. It's the same as it was thousands of years ago. It's the same. People are rebellious. They do whatever is pleasing in their own eyes. The Bible warns in Book of Judges. They do what was pleasing, what was, what was good in their own eyes. They did whatever they wanted to do. They did whatever they felt like doing. That's the attitude and the way of the world today. There is no fear of God, love of God. There's no fear or no love of God. People are rebellious, rebellious because of the darkness of this world.
Please guys, it doesn't have to be so. You could be born again. You could be saved. You could be anointed. You could be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can have a love for God. You can have a love for His Word. The Bible says so you ought to come to Jesus like little children. Why did Jesus say that? Why did Jesus say come to me like little children? Because little children are innocent. Little children are full of light. When you look at a little child, they have not experienced this evil world. They've not been corrupt. They've not been corrupted by this evil world. When you look at a little child, they're full of light because they're innocent. Jesus said you are to come to me like childlike faith because children are full of light and they believe. They don't question, they believe. That's how you are to come to God. True belief. True belief. Faith in his word. Don't argue. Don't fight. Don't war against the scriptures, but believe in what God says. God does not lie to you. The devil lies to you. The world lies to you. God won't lie to you. God's word is true. God has preserved his word. God is able to keep his word because God is God and he is the creator of all things. He's able to preserve his word because he is in authority over everything, even the darkness, even dominion, even the evil. God has authority over everything, guys. So God is able to establish and keep his word because he is God. But you don't want it. In your heart there's rebellion. There's pride, rejection, because you like your sin. You like to transgress God's laws. You want to stay in rebellion. You want to stay in darkness. You want to rebel until you take your last breath and come out of your body and spirit and you go to hell. And I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to receive heaven. But heaven, heaven is a, a, a precious place. And it's there for those that truly repent and believe in their heart and are willing to turn and to repent and get right with God. Because God is long-suffering, forgiving, merciful. He's able to save you guys. But do you want to be saved? Do you want to get saved? Do you want to be born again? Or do you want to stay in darkness? Enjoy the pleasures of life and then die in sin. The wages of sin is death guys. It doesn't change. The wages of sin is death. Jesus saves. When Jesus saves you, you are transformed, changed. You have a mind and a heart for God. The sanctification, it's a, pro it's a process. It's a process where God is, is teaching you, growing in you, edifying you. There's the devil speaking through you. Well, it's not God, is it? It can only be one or two things. It's either the devil or God. If you're of God, you'll say, God bless you. Keep, keep preaching, my, my brother. If you're of the devil, you'll argue and criticize and debate and reject and dismiss. That's what you do. Because that's what the devil does. He wars against the mind. The Bible says in Hebrews that when you're in the Word, guys, you, you come into the Word at, at the beginning like a baby drink, drinks milk at the beginning. You don't give a baby fish and chips and steak when he's born or her. You give her milk. And it's like the same with a Christian. When a Christian comes to the faith, they're in milk. They're learning. But once they get mature, they start to eat meat and potato. And when you're mature in your faith, when you're mature in your walk, because you're reading and God is teaching you, and he's, he's revealing so much to you, you're in a better, you're in a better position to, to preach to the world, to tell the world about the, the truth. For the truth sets you free. The truth is Jesus. And that's what Jesus does. He, sanct he sanctifies He's growing within you. He's able to transform you and change you. Because power. There's power in those that believe in Jesus. Because those that truly believe, they're anointed. They have the Holy Spirit inside them. The Ark of the Covenant, guys. Do you understand that, the, that God was in the Ark of the Covenant? His presence was in the Ark of the Covenant? And that Ark of the Covenant is similar to you. Because God dwells in the heart. He dwells in your heart. If you, if you truly believe and, re and repent and believe in what Jesus did, then God gives you the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit dwells within your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if you speak goodness and you speak the love of God, then you'll have the fruits of the Spirit. But if you speak evil and wickedness, then out of your heart will be evil and wickedness, guys. Do you understand that, guys? God says to love, not to kill, not to murder, you know? So then why is religious men, why do religious orders murder and kill? When God says to forgive, love, and not to kill. You see, true men of God forgive. They turn the cheek. They don't ever wage war against another. 
Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is obtained by violence and the violence take it by force. Because many people think to come to God, they have to somehow overpower people and force them to worship their gods. No. The kingdom of heaven is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, kindness, long-suffering, self-control. It's following Jesus, having the attributes and the nature of God. That's what, it, that's what God wants you to do. The Bible says that if somebody comes against you and hates you, and, and that you are to love them and forgive them and turn the other cheek. You know, you're not to war against them, raise a sword and kill them. That's not the way to do it. You see, you have to forgive even those that hate you. Even those that put you to death, guys. You have to forgive because God, God forgave. God forgave those men that nailed him to the cross. Jesus forgave them. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So that is the standard. That is the standard that God wants you to, to act and behave in. Yeah, we're like sheep to the slaughter. That's what the Bible says. You're like lambs to the slaughter. You know? It's not my choice, but it's the way God says. So I have to do, I have to believe. I have to pray for my enemies. I have to pray for those that persecute me. I have to pray for those that come against me. Because the people that come against you hate God in their hearts. Because life, life is precious to them. You see, Jesus said those that seek to save their lives will lose their lives. Jesus said, those that lose their lives for my name's sake and the gospel's sake, they'll have eternal life. So you have to be prepared to endure suffering. And if you don't endure suffering, you will do all you can to save your life. And by doing that, you'll betray others. And you will be wicked in your heart to others because you'll try to save your own life. And by trying to save your own life, you'll turn over others. You'll turn over people in order to stay you know, in order for the, for, the, for the devil not to war against you, you'll betray others, guys. But if you're in Christ Jesus, you'll suffer. Because you understand that the cup must be drunk from. Jesus said to the James and John, he said, I, I surely I tell you, you'll drink from the cup. But at my left and at my right hand side, that's not for me to say, but to my, that's for my father. They wanted to sit at the right, hands of, right hand and the left hand of Jesus. And he says, I'll tell you, you'll drink from the cup, but you won't. It's not up to me. I can't give you that, I can't give you that promise. Trust in Jesus, guys. Open up the Bible. Get into the Word of God. Spend time in the Scriptures. Read the Word. You know, download the Bible on your smartphone. Audio, listen to it. Yeah, God, God bless. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. You can audio listen to it. You know, listen to the Word of God. There's good, good teachers out there that I really respect, and they're good ones. And they can give you a better understanding of the Bible. You know, come up and take a track. I'll give you a, a, a good teacher to listen to. You know, I'll, you know, I'll email you the, a good pastor that you can follow, and he'll give you good, sound doctrine. You know, please, guys, your salvation is important. You know, you don't realize life is precious, and you don't live it for God. You live it for self. You think God's going to bring you into his kingdom when you live for self. That's, di that's just wrong. God has given life to you today. It's a test. And that life that he's given you, he wants you to, to submit unto him and to love him. And in return, he's going to give you eternal life. So he wants you to serve him, surrender unto him. Just as you surrender and serve the devil today, guys, through the actions and the behavior and the mannerisms of sin that you commit, God wants you to surrender unto him. God wants you, you know, God wants you to, to sur submit unto him so that he can use you powerfully. Because when God is able to use you powerfully, guys, he can save people through the preaching of the cross. The Bible says to the, to the Jews, Jesus is a stumbling block, and to the Gentiles, he's foolishness. Because that's what the preaching of the cross is to the, to the people of this world that are fool, fallen. They're fools in the, in the sense that they don't believe the, the word of God. They don't believe in what Jesus did. They don't believe he even existed. Only a fool says in his heart, there is no God, guys. Only a fool says in his heart, there is no God. There's a God, guys. And there are three that bear record. And all three are one. Which is very difficult to understand. The Bible says, great, great is the mystery of godliness. It's a mystery. You can't figure it out. You can't understand it because it's a mystery. But you're not to reject it just because you don't understand it. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you die for Jesus. Die for Jesus if necessary. You stand for truth. You stand for Jesus in an evil world that's corrupt and wicked. Stand for Jesus. Stand for your Father in heaven, the God of Israel. Sorry? 
Oh yeah, yeah, well a anyone knows that. Even wicked people know that, they just are corrupted, they like to do evil. Everybody knows that it is just male and female. In women and tennis guys, it's going on, we have prize money for the women, we have prize money for the men. Where's the prize money for them, that, them, that and the other? There isn't, there isn't a category because it's not real. I'm telling you guys, the devil is able to corrupt your conscience, corrupt your mind, pervert your mind, so much that you are confused on who you are. I'm telling you guys, you're created in the image of God. God is spirit, he gave you life. He's given you life, he put you in a vessel. That body is a vessel, it's a temple. It's a, it's a vessel, it's a house. He's put you in that house, so protect, protect your house. If you leave your house today, do you leave your house with the doors and windows open so that thieves can come in and steal and rob? No! When you leave your house today, you lock your door, you shut your windows, otherwise if you leave them all open and your door open, you go back, there'll be nothing left! Because the devil will come in and destroy the house! Well, it's the same with your body, it's the same! You keep the doors and windows shut and you don't let the devil in! Because if you let the devil in, you'll be destroyed! Because that's what the devil does, he destroys you from within. Do you understand that, guys? Do you understand that? It's not about your prophets, it's about truth, and truth comes through Jesus Christ, guys. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I know that you can change, you can be transformed. Anybody can have faith and belief in the Son of God when God reveals it. Don't get caught up in, a, in arguments over religious organizations and, and false prophets and things like that. Know that Jesus is true because everything Jesus says, it's always good, guys. Jesus is not calling you to murder. Jesus says if you look at somebody and hate them in your heart, you've committed murder. Jesus says if you look at a woman in lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. Do you understand how high Jesus has raised the bar? Do you understand how high Jesus has raised the bar? If you look at somebody in lust, you commit adultery. How many times do you do that, guys? Every day, looking at the women, when they're dressed very prov provocatively, they should be dressed morally and kind and respectful. People in the Middle East are not going around half naked. You know? They're covered up. Please guys, God is good. God is good and He loves you. And He wants you to know Him. He wants, to, he wants you to know Him more. He wants, to, he wants you to draw close to Him and really know Him. And to know God is to love God. To know God is to obey God. To know God is to do what He commands, do what He says. That's what it is guys, to really love God. Is to do what He says. It's not confusing. The Old Testament is there as an example unto us not to do the things they did. That's what God gave us the Old Testament for. The Old Testament was given to us as an example so that we would not make the same mistakes. Solomon, he married a thousand wives, guys. 700 wives, 300 concubines. And he went away. He turned away from God. In the end, Solomon in his old age turned away from God and sacrificed children unto Baal. He, he sacrificed children unto Babylonian gods. Solomon was wise. He was the wisest. The only one wiser than Solomon was Jesus. Solomon's the great wisdom and wisdom beyond anything. But yet at the end, in his old age, Solomon betrayed God and turned away from God and served other gods. This is what you get when you read the Old Testament. All over the Old Testament is to be faithful to me. Be faithful, obedient. Don't follow the Babylonian gods. What's happening today? These false religions, these cults, they're hidden in Babylon. Sun worship, moon worship, star worship. Please guys, trust in Jesus. He is the truth, you know it. That's the truth. 
church, right? And I, look, look, I want you to go on here. Look, look one. So you go to that church, yeah, and it's, it's this guy here. Look at him. Okay. It's him. And you, I want you to go along here. You go into a bow. Then he's got his website here, yeah? That's his website. You hit that website. Yeah. Okay? Then you go into Bible study. I'll show you. Okay. Here it is up here. Uh, it says yeah. here. It says all Bible teachings. So you go there. Yeah. Okay? And then you go through the Bible. Okay? Yes. And then when you go through the Bible, you get the whole Bible here. Start with Genesis and goes all the way down. If you stick with that man, yeah. he'll open your eyes. Yeah, because I haven't been able to read the Bible. I haven't even just take it out and read it. Yeah. Because I've been going through some of That's the good thing. You can read along with him. Yeah, he, yeah. he explains it and he shows His name is Paul Le, Le, Pou, Le Paul Le Pou, Bouvier. Paul Le Pou. Yeah, people. And uh, there's so many good people in Brixton that want to hear the word of God, you know. I know it's a very fruitful pl place, Brixton. Uh, this is a place I wouldn't mind being if I'm really suffering in Jesus Christ. Because you people, you've got, you've got good hearts. I'm not saying you're perfect now, guys. Don't get me wrong. But you're not bad. Uh, a lot of places I go, guys, there's an awful lot of rebellious people, wicked people. People will falsely accuse you to the police and all kinds of things. But guys, you know... God is good and God's in the hearts of people that have, you know, humbleness and, and kindness in their hearts, guys. You know, it's most important that you love. You know, it's, uh, it's important that you love one another. You know, love one another. Even, in, even if you're in error, guys. Even if you're in error, love one, well, love one another. It's the, it's, the, it's the best thing in the world. Love conquers evil. Do you understand that? You know, Jesus said that if somebody is doing you evil, you know, you are to go up. And if they're in need of a water or a, or a bit of bread, give them a bit of water, give them a bit of bread. Because Jesus said it's like putting hot coals on their head. It means like the demons and devils within that evil person are burning up. Because when you pay, when you pay good with evil, guys, you really are tormenting the evil spirits in that person. You know? Listen, buddy, I don't know what you're saying, but calm down there, you'll have a heart attack. You know, you know Jesus is good. I preach the gospel, and if you are rebelling against God, then... Then you need to get right, buddy. 
you're not you're not a spring chicken are you you're not a spring chicken you know you're not going to live forever you need to have faith and believe in Jesus the son of God you know don't be a raster I don't know what you are just just be a, a follower of Jesus that's what you need to be you need to show love in your heart buddy love in your heart that's what it is love in your heart God is, God is love God is love are you filming me in a positive way or a ne negative way? Are you filming to mock me and send to your friends and belittle me? Or is that what you're doing? Are you disgusted? Do you hate God in your heart? Are you there with, with your little commentary saying how this is an evil man that's preaching evil and preaching hate when he's telling you to repent and get right? Now you can upload me on Facebook and all people can clap you on the back and say well done. Yeah, you filmed a man of God on the street preaching to the people that are lost. Because many people are lost until they're found. That's what Jesus did. He came to those that were lost to preach the good news to those that are in darkness. Are you in darkness? Do you proclaim you're in light? Or are you of light? Are you on light? Because uh, the Bible says you're known by their fruits. The Bible says if you're walking in the light, you'll demonstrate the light. Yes, if you're walking in the light, you'll demonstrate the light. But if you walk in darkness, oh, you're going to be rebellious. You're going to come against God. You're going to be arguing, contentious. You're going to be fighting, putting down people, slandering people, cursing people. I hope you're giving me blessings, buddy. I hope you're blessing me. Ah, God bless you. Because even if you're cursing me, I'll bless you. Father God, open up the eyes of that old fella. Give him truth. Give him truth in his heart. He's a nice old man. He's just being corrupted by the evil system of this world. The devil corrupts your mind. That's what the devil does. He corrupts your mind. You can have a good heart or you can have a wicked heart. It's up to you. In the book of Daniel, guys, Daniel chapter 12, it says this. It says, the wise will come to the knowledge of God, but the wicked will become more wicked in their hearts. Just keep that in mind, guys. In the times of darkness and the increasing of darkness and evil, the Bible says in Daniel 12 that the wicked will become more wicked in their hearts. But the wise, they'll understand, they'll know. They'll go, you know what? This world is dark and evil. It's pushing too much things that are wicked and evil. I'm going to get behind the God of Israel. I'm going to serve Jesus. I'm going to believe in the Son of God. Please, people, don't come up to me and say you believe in Jesus and then actually dis disbelieve what he did on the cross. People that believe in Jesus believe that he died on the cross. It wasn't Judas. It wasn't another man. It was Jesus Christ. That's what he came to do. He came to give his life and lay his life down in order for the world to be saved. Please don't come up to me and say, I love Jesus, but I don't believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. You don't believe in Jesus. It's very clear. Somebody that believes in Jesus believes in his testimony. Believes in what he says. Believes in what he proclaimed. Believes in his death, burial, and resurrection, guys. Work out your own fear. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, guys. People of Brixton, you, you need Jesus in your life. You need Jesus Christ. He's the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, God bless you, buddy. God bless you. God bless you, buddy. Do you, wanna, do you want me to get you something? Come over here and give me a hug. Come over here and give me a hug. <laughs> I don't hate you, buddy. I understand. I understand. I understand how people hate God and war against God. I understand what's tormenting you. I know what's attacking your mind. Some people, they, they wage violence on others. Some people persecute others in different ways. Some people go to the police and, and falsely accuse. Many people do different things to be evil, guys. You can stand and complain and moan and shout and scream. Or you can get humble with God and say, Father, please forgive me. I'm sorry for the way I behaved. I'm sorry for the way I acted. Father God, I know that you're the true God of the Bible, the God of Israel. I know that you have a son. Please, Father God, help me to believe more. Help me to be more humble. That's what it is, guys. To be humble. To acknowledge your, your sin. To acknowledge the way you live your life. And to come to God and ask him to deliver you. To help you to be a better person. Who doesn't want to be a good person? Do you all want to be good people? Isn't it good to be good? Isn't it better to be good than evil? Isn't it good to be good? Isn't it better to be kind? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it, 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 isn't it more rewarding when you do good to somebody than to do evil? Do you not understand that? Isn't it nicer to go away after doing a good, thing, a good deed rather than doing an evil deed? Isn't it nicer that you gave up your time and maybe your money and you blessed somebody that was less fortunate than you? Isn't that a good thing? When you went away, you did a good thing because that's what God is. He's good. 
But why, why follow the wicked heart? Because the Bible says the heart can be wicked all the time. Who can know it? So you have to follow God's instructions because God instructs you on in how to live. You need advice from a creator that gave you life. Because when the creator gave you life, he also created evil to test you. God created evil so that you could be tested by evil when evil comes against you. That's the whole purpose of why God created evil. The Bible says in Isaiah, I created the light, I created the darkness, and I created evil. God created evil because God is not able to test man. God is not able to come against his creation and test it. So he had to create evil in order for evil to come against you so that you will be tested, so that you would recognize evil and reject it and not walk in the ways of evil. Ah, oh, God bless. How old are you, buddy? How old are you? Yeah? How old are you? God bless you. God bless you, man. You know? You are God, full of energy. Fair play to you. Fair play to you. Yeah? Do you want, you need a Bible track? Do you want a Bible track, you know? Ah, oh, God bless him. Ah, oh, yeah, he's sweet. You know, I love the fella. Even though he's a little confused, I still love the fella. You know, because God calls us to love and not hate. You know? God calls us to love and not hate, guys. It's so easy to hate. It's so easy to put another person down. You know, guys, Jesus, have you heard of him? Ah, oh, guys, you know the kingdom of heaven? 1,500 miles in diameter all the way around. Did you, do you understand that, guys? The kingdom of heaven is 1,500 miles in diameter all the way around. It has 12 gates. Three in the north, three in the south, three in the east, and three in the west. 12 gates represent the 12 tribes of Jacob. The 12 sons of Jacob. Jacob is Israel. That's what it is, guys. God has created a city. It's in heaven. He's going to bring it down. He's going to bring it down from heaven. As it is in heaven, so shall it be here on earth, guys. Ah, oh, please, guys. The, the glories and the treasures that God has reserved for those that love him, you can't comprehend. Think about the richest person in the world. Think about the most luxurious, rich person in the world, guys. Let's just say Prince Charles. Let's just say Madonna. But think about these people that have all the money in the world. They're not happy. Why are they so sad? Because they know that life, that's all they have in this world, is, is the life that they live in this world. Once they take their last breath, guys, they're in darkness because they do not receive Jesus in their heart. They are the builders that rejected the cornerstone. The builders that rejected the cornerstone. The builders are, tho the builders are those that conduct and practice witchcraft. They are in Masonic lodges, in Satanic temples, they're in religious orders. They are the builders that rejected the cornerstone. The cornerstone is Jesus Christ. The builders are those with great money, wealth and power. When Jesus was brought up to a mountain by the devil and he said, worship me and I'll give you all this. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. I worship my father and my father only. And what did the devil do next? He went to man and he promised man the world. And some of these men, they chose the, the luxuries and the treasures of the world and Satan gave them the, gave them the powers and the money and the, and the wealth and, and all of this wealth and power and control he gave to men that bowed their knee to him. They are called the kingdom of darkness, guys. And they bow their knee to Lucifer and they exalt Lucifer because they have sold their souls. They are living for the life that they have today, but their life is not a hundred 20, it's not 150, 60, 200, 300 years. It's a small period of time where if you're lucky you'll get to 70, 80, 90. But then you die and you go to hell because you reject the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, guys. Jesus. Don't hate him. Don't hate his words. Don't hate who he is. Don't hate the Son of God. Love him. If you don't understand him, love him and ask him to reveal himself to you. Don't hate the one that gave you life. Your mom didn't give you life. Jesus gave you life. He put the spirit in you. If the God didn't put the spirit in you, you wouldn't be living and breathing today. Do you understand that? You can buy a car, but if you don't have a battery in a car or petrol or diesel in a car, the car doesn't run, guys. The car has to have power in it for it to run. And God has put a spirit in you. And when God puts the spirit in you, it's life. It is the power that controls and runs the body. That's where you come from. You come from heaven. You're either on the right hand side of God or you're on the left hand side. The left hand side is the tares, the goats. The, you know, the right hand side are the sheep, the wheat. 
And you know, when you put wheat and, and, and tares together, they look very similar, guys. You can't tell them apart until the very end. At the very end, you can see that the tares, they look different to the wheat. I'm telling you guys, live for Jesus, love Jesus. Practice, practice the truth, the truth will set you free. When you walk with Jesus, you're not in bondage to nothing. You are free, for whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. I'm not tied into buildings. Jesus said to the woman, Jesus said to the woman in Samaria who was at the well, he says, there's coming a day when you will no longer worship me on the mountains and in the temples. There's coming a day when you will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, guys. There's coming a day when we will worship God in spirit and in truth. Spirit is his word, his Bible. And you know, guys, you're, you've corrupted. The JWs, they've allowed men to corrupt the word of God. You don't think Jesus is the Son of God, the living God. You don't think Jesus is God. You think he's a God. It's wrong. He's the almighty God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can't comprehend it and you can't understand it. But you stand in pride. Thinking that you are good with God. But yet, what do you do? What did you do in the pandemic? I was out on the pandemic preaching Jesus. Being persecuted. Harassed by people. Harassed by uh, the police and told to go home. You know, but what were you guys doing? You were hiding in your houses. Your churches were shut. You were afraid to go out. You see, men of God are not afraid. When Peter was released from prison, he was told to go into the courtyard and preach Jesus. And the man came up to him, the Pharisees, and said, Did we, did we not tell you not to preach this man anymore? And Peter turned to them and said, Do we not fear our Father in heaven more than men? You have to fear God, guys. You have to fear God more than man. Don't be led astray by five men in Brooklyn, New York. You're under the power of deception. Guys, you're not evil people. I don't look at you as evil people. I look at you as heavily deceived. Heavily deceived, guys. There is great deception. Jesus said in Matthew 24. Do you know what he said? The first thing Jesus said to his disciples, what did he say? He said, do not be deceived. Ah, the devil comes in many forms and in many ways. He'll come and promote religion that's not of him. This is what you've got to do. You have to test everything by the word of God, guys. And I know that this is not true. You ask a Jehovah's Witness how to get saved, they won't be able to tell you how to get saved. If you're collapsing on the street and you've got 30, 40 seconds to live, ask them. Ask them what to say. And I guarantee you they won't tell you the truth. I'm telling you guys, you have to believe in Jesus. You have to repent. Say sorry for your sins. You have to believe in his death, burial and resurrection. That is the gospel. And then there's more to it because when God increases you with wisdom and knowledge, He sanctifies you. And he, you're, you're growing in, 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 a wrong, uh, in a strong relationship with Him. He reveals Himself more and more to you because you're obedient. When you're obedient, you're rewarded. When you're obedient to God, you're rewarded. God rewards you. He rewards you with knowledge, wisdom, discernment. He gives you many gifts when you're obedient. God rewards those that are faithful and loyal to Him. Please, guys. Please, turn to Jesus and live. All you need is your bedroom. All you need is your Bible. All you need is, that's it. You don't need anything else. You don't need something else that causes you to work for your salvation. All you need is faith in your heart and belief in your heart. And then God will do the rest. God will do the rest. God knows his children. The Bible says that the real church is, is, is stones. They're little stones that come together and they form the church. Peter says you're a precious stone and the precious, all the precious stones come together they build the spiritual church and Jesus is the head of that spiritual church it's not a physical building guys the spiritual church is, is millions and millions and millions of people all over the world that have received the Holy Spirit that's the spiritual church and Jesus is the head of it he's called the high priest the high priest is Jesus Christ guys he's the high priest Open up the word of God. Open up the Bible and get saved. He is good. God is good. But the devil comes with great distraction, guys. The devil will, will appeal to your flesh. Whatever it is that you like. The devil will appeal to your flesh. You may love tennis. It may be an idol to you. Sometimes you'll love football so much that it becomes an idol to you. When you love something more than you love God, then it becomes an idol. Please guys, 
Love God and give Him glory. Love Jesus. He is the truth, guys. Jesus sets you free. Jesus transforms you and changes you. Jesus is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Many believe and many hate Him. You're, you're in darkness. You're in darkness. You're, you're of the devil, your father, because you don't receive the truth. You reject Him. If you reject Jesus, you're of the devil. You're of the devil. You're controlled by the devil. The devil influences you. Life is precious. God he will establish your thoughts. But if you live for self, if you live for self, guys, you're going to be led by evil. Evil will, uh, evil will give you bad evil thoughts. And through your evil thoughts, you will do evil actions, guys. You understand that? To fight the devil, you have to hold your thoughts captive. You have to hold the thoughts captive. That's what Paul said. The Apostle Paul said to hold every thought captive. Hold every thought captive and don't allow the devil to reign, to reign in your temple. You see, many people allow the devil to sit in their temple. Lost. That will send you to hell, buddy. You know, many people will allow the devil to sit in their temple. You invite the devil in and he sits in your temple. Do you understand? God wants to sit in your temple. He's promising that he can sit in your temple when he puts the Holy Spirit in you. So if God wants to sit in your temple, what does the devil want to do? Don't you know the devil always counterfeits everything of God? When God promises that he will live and dwell in your body, what will the devil do? Will the devil not do the same thing? Of course he will. And you invite, the, you invite him in when you reject God, when you reject and rebel against the gospel, when you hate God's people, when you hate God's word, you let the, you let the devil come in and then he destroys you from within. He tells you there is no God. He turns you into an atheist. He tells you that you came from a monkey. He tells you that you, you came from a big bang and a monkey. Ah, oh, come on guys. Even children don't buy that. I didn't buy that when I was at school. I didn't buy that rubbish when I was at school. I didn't really examine it too much, but I didn't believe in it. I didn't believe that, that we came from monkeys. I came from God. Because God gave me life. Because God put power into this body when I was in my mother's womb. Just as it said in Jeremiah chapter 1, guys. Jeremiah chapter 1 tells you your spirit, you have a hard, you have a hard time getting that. Guys, if you pull the battery out of your mobile phone, it doesn't work. You are power. Power is inside you because God put life in you. Your spirit inside the body. Your spirit inside the body. God put the spirit life inside you. But God, because of evil, because we know evil now, because of Adam and Eve's sin in the garden, now God has allowed and has given permission for evil spirits to overcome you. So now you, in your body, in your temple, you have to guard yourself against evil spirits that want to come in and destroy your house, your temple. Please guys, that's how the devil destroys you. By destroying your temple, by destroying you, by coming in and giving you these crazy ideas that it's okay to open up the laptop at night and look at porn. You know, you understand guys, when you do these things you're led by the devil to do, you have to understand the power of darkness guys. You have to understand the power of darkness, how darkness overcomes and is destroying people. Darkness can destroy you guys if you're not on guard. You have to be on guard, guys. You have to be on guard. You have to protect your house. You have to protect your house, your body, your temple. Otherwise, the devil will destroy it. The devil will come in and give you all kinds of crazy ideas. Give you crazy ideas that are ridiculous. You know? How is it that a dog knows he's a dog? A cat knows he's a cat? A horse knows it's a horse? A elephant knows it's an elephant? My people don't know who they are! A lion knows he's a lion! A bear knows he's a bear, but my people, they're confused, they don't know who they are. Isn't that crazy? You're created in the image of God, male or female, but the devil will attack your mind and tell you that you're this, that or the other. And you go along with it because you're corrupted, because evil wars against you. You see guys, if you're not protecting yourself and protecting your mind, you'll become corrupt in your mind. You'll, come, you'll become so corrupt in your ways that you'll, you'll start to do evil and you'll think it's good. Isaiah says, woe to those that call evil good. Woe to those that put light for darkness and darkness for light. Please guys, salvation is in Jesus Christ. It's too late when you take your last breath and come out of your body and you go to darkness. 
It's too late when you're in hell. It's too late when you go to darkness, guys. It's too late. You have life. It's precious. Live it for Jesus today. But you don't, you're not promised tomorrow. You don't know when God's going to take your life. There's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says this man, he has all riches. And he says, I will pull my barn down and I will, big, I will grow bigger. I will, I will make a bigger barn for all my treasures. And Jesus, he says, you fool. For this night, your life was required. Your life was required this night. So you do not build up your treasures here on earth, guys. Where a thief comes along, you, you build your treasures up in heaven. Where the thief doesn't come along and steal. That's where you build your treasures up, guys. You build your treasures up in heaven, where the thief doesn't come along and steal. There's no good building your treasure treasures up on this on this earth, guys, because the robber will come along and steal it all. You know, Jesus said it's easier for an animal, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. All things are possible with God, though. God can make a way. Jesus wants your heart, guys. Jesus doesn't want your wallet. Jesus doesn't want your money. Jesus doesn't want your money. He wants your heart, guys. When God has your heart, he's got you. He's got you, guys. When he's got your heart, he's got all of you. All of you. Jesus doesn't want 10%. Jesus doesn't want 20%. Jesus doesn't want 50%. Jesus doesn't want 60%. Jesus doesn't want 80%. Jesus doesn't want 90%. Jesus wants 100%, guys. Because he's bought you. You're bought and paid for, you're purchased. When you're born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, you are not of yourselves, you've been bought and purchased by God. God has purchased you. He saved you from death. He saved you. God has purchased you and saved you from death, guys. Trust in Jesus, love him, obey him, follow him. Don't hate him in your hearts, guys. Please, people, the good news is God's word. Jesus is God's word. The good news, to be good, not evil, to do good, to love your brother as yourself. Sorry? Amen. Amen. Yeah, exactly. If it's not genuine and you love the world, he won't anoint you. So anyway, I'll let you talk to that guy. Yeah, that's all right. I'm going to preach. I'm going to ask my question. You know you'll be there. You'll be able to see that spirit there. You're praying that you can... It's ID you want to do. One of you wants to be one. No, one of you wants to be one. Yeah, that's true. I want us to be baptized in water. So I be it's not necessary. The people on the cross wasn't baptized in water. All right. But you don't have a relation. I just know people say that. I don't know what you're talking about. listen. The, 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 look, the real baptism is not water. It's the Holy Spirit. No. My friend at work was baptized in water and he lives like the devil. You can, when you get baptized in water, it means nothing if your heart is not right with God. And yeah, you need the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but he cheers. Listen, the baptism of water is a symbol of faith and, and I would do it. It's easy to do right now today, just not a problem getting baptized. But in the dark times, in the evil times, you may not be able to be baptized in water. There might not be any water around. How do you come through your mother's womb? What comes through your mother's womb when you follow through? Water, right, so that's water. And then the spirit. So that's the water and the spirit. 
again, the thief on the cross wasn't baptized in war. And he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. So again, as we have the ability to get baptized as a symbol of our faith, get baptized in war. But water baptism doesn't save you, buddy. It doesn't. No, because I have people in my work that are wicked and evil and they were baptized in water. Then you've got to have the Holy Spirit. If God doesn't dwell in you, then you don't know him. He says you have to be born again of the Spirit. It means God, God put his Spirit inside believers, followers. And again, if you don't have the Spirit inside you, but you got baptized in water, but you live in the world and you still sin like the devil, you don't know him. You see, listen, you can't argue with God. God's word is trumping what you say. Yeah, but that proves to you and me right now that if we were to be killed today, but at the last minute we accept Jesus, he would bring us into heaven. Yeah, well that's what God says. So you don't believe that a person could be on their deathbed and get saved? Well, then that's, that's crazy because that's what God does. God is graceful and merciful and on a deathbed he can give you that. He can save you. That's the whole point of the feast, the thief on the cross. It's not for you to live your life wickedly all your life and then wait for your deathbed. What it's saying is that you can get right with God in sickness. In, in sickness you can get right with God and then you can get saved. Let me get the scripture. Who am I scared? No be the spirit of Christ dwelling you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, the Bible says, well, no, no. That's it. And how do you know you've got the spirit of Christ? Yeah, it's, the of the it's the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. Where does it say you have to? Tongues is a gift. See, that's false. Now you've just said something that's false and I'm going to call you out on it. Because you just said to me that you have to be speaking in tongues to be saved. A tongue is a gift. And God says that you are to ask for the gifts. I can speak in tongues, but I don't boast about it. But I tell you this, if you didn't speak in tongues, you could still be saved and born again. Yes, that's a lie. You see, God doesn't say you must have tongues. You're not speaking of God, you're speaking of a different spirit. And I reject it. Amen. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruits. You can't, you can't come up to people that love God and serve God and they don't have the gift of tongues. And then tell them that they're not saved. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That is crazy. Some people, the Bible says there seems a way that's right onto, you know, onto a man, but his ways lead to destruction. So you're stopping and preventing people to come to Jesus because they don't speak in tongues. That's crazy. Tongues is a gift that you ask God for. And you also ask for the interpretation of tongues. Because when you speak tongues, you don't understand what you're speaking. So God says, and pray for the interpretation as well. So as I said guys, we really need to be testing everything because so many people, so many people will come up in error, not in, not, you're not nasty, but in error they will speak things that are not true. I'm trying to speak, preach buddy, you know the Bible, I pray, God bless you, I'm preaching to the lost. But it's all about the heart, guys. It's all about heart too. Is your heart good? Are you obedient to God? Are you are you obedient and faithful to God? Do you live a holy life? Do you curse? Do you smoke? Do you drink alcohol? No? You're living a, a holy life? Amen, good. Well, like I said, that still doesn't save you unless you're born of the Spirit. You know what I mean? you got to be born again. You have to have God's Holy Spirit inside you. That's the whole point. This is why. They see, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon people. David, he was a man of God, but the Holy Spirit came upon him. And he was able to walk with God because the Spirit was upon him. But the New Covenant is better because it's in. It's when the Holy Spirit comes inside and God lives in you. And you know it because when you speak truth, it will line up with the Bible. And you spoke lies there for a minute, moment. You, you spoke a lie. You said that you need to speak tongues to be saved. And that's not true. You did. I've got it on camera. I'll play it back to you. I'll, you'll be on YouTube tonight. 
I'll watch it. You'll see it. You'll see it. I'll put it on slow motion and I'll play it to you. He said you have to speak in tongues to be saved. And that is not true. A, a tongues is a gift. And remember that, guys. Tongues is a gift. You may not have the gift of tongues, but you may have the gift of healing. He may have the gift of tongues. You may have the gift of healing. You could have the gift of miracles. You see, everybody can have a gift. And I love to be able to give correction to people in love. I don't do it in nastiness or in pride. I give you the truth because the truth is true. I believe in what God says. I believe in God's word. God's word is true. It's, it is important if you can get baptized in water. But it is, to me, there may be times when you not, won't be able to be baptized in water. If you were to come up today and walk these streets and somebody come up and insult, assault you and hurt you, and you're on the streets bleeding, and I can't baptize you in water, I can come up to you and say, you know, do you believe in Jesus? Will you believe in Jesus? You know, and, in, and if the person confesses Jesus and they say I do and they, are, and they repent of their sins, then God may, may have grace on them and take them to heaven. That's the grace and the love of God, guys. All through the Bible. You know, Manasseh was an evil king. What did Manasseh do? Manasseh was evil. He was the son of, I think, uh, I think he was the son of... Uh, is it um, a Aza or could be, ha ha I think he was the son of Hezekiah. Or he was the son of a, a good king, but Manasseh was evil. Manasseh was wicked. He was the worst king in, in, in Judah. He was the worst king. He, he was evil. But what Manasseh did was he was taken away and captive in chains. And in, the, in, in his prison cell, he cried out to God and repented. And God heard his cries and then forgave him and sent him back and he reigned in he reigned in, in Judah and Jerusalem for a long time after that. But he was a wicked evil king. So God gives grace and God is able to forgive. Please guys, spend time in the word. Spend time reading God's word. Don't go on your own understanding. Don't go on your own understanding. Many people want to go on their own understanding and because of that, they're prideful. And they get prideful in the word and in their knowledge. You have to believe in what God says guys. Believe in what God says. Believe in, believe in what Jesus says. Jesus is life. His words are good. You know? The Bible says in Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37, If you call yourself a prophet or a spiritual man, believe the words I say unto you. But if you be ignorant, then be ignorant. Meaning that if you don't believe what God says unto you, then you're ignorant. And when you're ignorant, you're full of pride. Because it's my way. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. I'm not wrong because I'm taking God's Bible, His Word. I'm believing what Jesus says. But you're coming up and you're contradicting His Word and saying, no, it's me. I know it. I know it. But the Bible says what you say is wrong. So who do you believe? You've got to believe God. I test everything by God. No, but I can show you tonight. I'll show you tonight if you look at my channel and you'll see what you said. You'll see that you said it, buddy. And it's okay to be in error. We all make errors and mistakes. Yeah, but there's false tongues. Do you know Kenneth Copeland? Yeah. Kenneth Copeland bubbles. Does that mean that he's a man of God? And yet he's a false prophet? So you see, you can't know. You know, you can waffle and say all things. But if your heart is not right... Sorry, sorry you know, don't take my microphone. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, buddy? You know, do I come up and take your stuff? Do I come up and take your helmet? Your smartphone? Yeah, what's wrong with people? <laughs> Honestly, does it give them the right to take my property just because they want it? This is what it is. This is the, the age we live in now. Give me it. I want it. Give me it. You know, I want it. Take it. That's what it is. It's disgusting. Show love, guys. Love. Love. Love is good. Hate is, is evil. 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 Evil is evil, guys, and when you, uh, when you act and behave in an evil way, you'll start cursing God. You'll curse his people. But God, he gives you so much grace. He gives you so much mercy. The people that walk by me and they sometimes hate me, if they could, they'd stick a knife in me and kill me. I love them because I understand. I understand what it is, what drives people. Evil. Evil drives people. Because evil is an evil presence that you can't see. It's behind a veil that's hidden to you. You can't see it, but it's there. It's constantly corrupting. It's constantly influencing you and it's destroying you. And you have to fight against it. This is why Paul says you have to have the armor of God. You have to have the helmet of salvation. It protects your mind against the devil. You have to have the Bible. It's the sword. The sword is your Bible. You see, it's the spirit of God that fights against the devil. I love people, but I'm not going to tolerate their lies and their... I'm going to go with God's word. I'm going to go with God's word, guys. God is true. God doesn't lie to you. God is good. 
Jesus Christ reveals all things to those that love him. God will always reveal the secrets, the secrets. The Bible says in, in Proverbs that it's up to a king. It's down to kings to find out the secrets of God. It's, it's, to, it's, 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 to, it's like it's a mystery. There's so many mysteries and hidden things in the word of God that God wants you to see, that God wants you to know. And you have to be, you have to be diligently looking into the word of God and seeking out the things that are a mystery. Because God's word is powerful. It is able to change you and transform you guys. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to serve God. To serve the God of Israel. To serve my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. It's a blessing to stand for the truth. In a world that promotes lies and wickedness and evil. It's a blessing to stand in the truth and on the truth guys. Jesus is the rock. He's that, he's that spiritual rock guys. He's that rock that gives you knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Through his Bible, his words are powerful. You know, man shall not live on bread alone, but out of every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, guys. That's a powerful scripture. It means you don't go on your own understanding. You don't come up with, I think, maybe, I understand, I think myself, well, I believe. This is what I get from people. Well, I believe, I think, I understand, well, my view is, and that's all good, but it's not according to what God says. So you have to go on God's word, guys. You have to test everything by God's Bible. You don't go on your own understanding. Because many people come up and go, well, I think. Well, I know. Well, I've been told. Well, I understand. I believe. Well, what you're doing is you're just going on by, you're going on your heart. And your heart can be deceitful. And it is. For who can know it? So you have to go on what God says. You have to go by what God has written and said. Because God doesn't lie. God doesn't lie to you. But the devil can overcome you and trick you and deceive you. So it's down to you guys to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Because you don't know when God's going to take your life. Yeah, you're going out tonight, guys, and you may like, you might lose your life tonight. You might get into an argument, someone may stick a knife in you, you may lose your life. You may cross the road and get hit by a bus. You're not guaranteed. You're not guaranteed tomorrow, guys, to live for Jesus. Because you don't know when God's going to take you. You don't know when your life is going to be taken. Only God, only God knows. So love Him. Obey Him. Follow Him. Follow Jesus. Stand for truth. Stand for righteousness. Stand for the living God. I don't get my counsel from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Sorry. They're not, they, they, they don't walk with God. No. They don't walk with God. It's a deception. It's Babylonian teaching. Yeah. Five men in Brooklyn, New York, can tell them what they do. Tell, they, they have so many false prophecies. They have so many false prophecies. It's unbelievable. God doesn't lie. God doesn't give you false prophecies. I do not take counsel from the Jehovah's Witnesses that say Jesus is a God. They call Jesus a God and not the God. That's what they say. Read their Bible. Jesus is a God, not the God. That's wrong. That's lies. That's deception. That's not true. Jesus created all things. Yes. Many liars and deceivers. Many people falling for false Jesuses, false religion. Five men in Brooklyn, New York. They are under the power of five men in Brooklyn, New York that give them different teachings that corrupt you all the time. Your, your beliefs change from, from 20, 30 years that you don't have full truth because you kept, you kept, you, you keep, you're being told by men in New York what to believe. You're told by men what to believe and then you preach what men tell you to preach. You have elders that control you. You don't, let, you don't allow your sisters or your brothers to speak to people about Jesus because you're, protect, you're, you're protecting them so much, but you're not protecting them. You're keeping them from the truth. You're proud, guys. You're proud. You don't know the truth. What does it say on your boards about Jesus Christ? Mental health is demonic oppression. Mental health is demonic oppression. That's the truth. The world, the world gives you mental health. The Bible tells you it's demonic oppression. That's what mental health is. Jesus makes it very clear. Yes, yeah, 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 it's not of God. Don't, don't join that occult. It's a cult. It's a cult. It's no, it's no different than Scientology and the Mormons. It's the same. It's a false Jesus. You know, the true Jesus of the Bible, it doesn't, doesn't yoke with people that are preaching a false Jesus. You know, you have to be careful who you yoke to. You know, yes. But that's how you do you test everything by God's word. Look at their look at their teachings. Look at all the prophecies. 
they proclaimed. They said the end of the world was about 50 years ago. They said, they said so many things. If you go into Jehovah's Witnesses and, 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 uh, and actually research them, guys, they are false. They are false because they do not stand on God's word. They keep, they keep listening to five men in Brooklyn, New York that feed them false information. Come on, anybody, anybody knows that the Bible is your authority to go to. Do you know that the Jehovah's Witnesses have their own Bible? They don't have the Bible, they've changed the word of God. They change scriptures, they remove scriptures. They are not of God. They're not of God. They, can, they are deceived. You know, God loves them, but they must come out of their lies. You've got to come out of your lies. Jesus said to follow him, not follow religious leaders and, and cults. You're to follow Jesus. If you stay in your cults, you're going to go straight to the pits of hell. Because it's man-made. It is man-made. You know, there was no Jehovah's Witnesses 2,000 years ago. You know, it's a man-made religion. It's a man-made thing. Yes, well, demonic, evil spirits are behind it. But it's not true. The truth is Jesus Christ. The truth is Jesus. His word never changes. His words are true. Yeah, well why are you taking counsel from them then? Why do you take counsel from them? Well let's just hope that your heart is good with God. Well, many people say it, but you'll know them by their fruits. Well, you'll know them because it'll line up with scripture. Oh no, well, you, you are, there's a few things you said that weren't right. But that's fine, because people can be narrow, so I'm not judging you for that. Like I said, no one's perfect. I mean, the Bible says that the, when the perfect one comes, no, I'm not perfect. But, but, but I always go by God's word. So, in the eyes of God, I'm perfect. You see, do you know that David was called perfect and righteous? But you know that David wasn't though, don't you? Know? You know he wasn't. So, in the eyes of God, we are perfect. In the eyes of God, we're perfect because we have the Holy Spirit. But I don't say I'm perfect in the way man thinks of perfect. I'm perfect because God sees me, and all he sees is his son. And that's how I'm perfect. Because God, Jesus washed away my sins. And so, that's what it is, to have faith and trust in Jesus. They have a, yeah, it's a Babylonian book. I've gone into, uh, it goes back to Babylon. Jehovah's Witnesses is Babylonian. It's a Babylonian, everything is Babylonian. They, they yoke to the, they'll yoke to the one world religion when it is formed. I guarantee you that their leaders will yoke to the one world religion when it's formed. I guarantee you they will. I'm not saying those people will. They might come out of it, but I tell you this, there is a real church, they're the children of Jesus Christ, they're called the bride, and then you have the false church, which is called the whore, which is false religion. And they are part of the false religious churches. And that's what it is. This is why Jesus says, I didn't come to bring, uh, you know, unity. I didn't come to bring peace, I came to divide. Jesus came to divide, to separate those that are liars from those that are true. You have to stand with God. You have to stand on his word. You have to stand in his truth, guys. The truth sets you free. To be honest, I mean, listen, guys, I mean, as a Jehovah's Witness, not knocking you, but I've never seen any of you speaking loud on the streets. Jesus commands you to go into the highways and byways and to raise your voice like a trumpet. You guys are too afraid to do it. Why can't you do it? Because you don't have the Holy Spirit, guys. You have a religious spirit. A religious spirit is dangerous because it keeps you up from it keeps you from the truth. The religious spirit in this world is very it's very demonic because it's Babylonian. You need to understand that when you have the Holy Spirit, you'll speak truth. And you don't care who you offend or upset. You tell the truth. You tell people how to get to Jesus. How to get to the true Jesus of the Bible. Because Paul, he, he said that when I leave, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful because I know men will come in and corrupt the word of God. And they'll pervert the word of God. So you can't be in unity with false religion. If I was to give you, uh, say, £200, and in that £200, I gave you 40 counterfeit, 40 counterfeit notes. 40 pounds that was counterfeit. You see, 160 of that money I gave you was real, but 40 pounds of that money was counterfeit. You wouldn't, be, you wouldn't like it when you go into a shop to spend it, would you? You'd spend 100 and, uh, for a 60, but the 40 you wouldn't be able to spend. Why? Because it's not real. It's counterfeit. 
And so Jesus knows those that are counterfeit. Jesus knows the religious organized systems and the occults out there, they're counterfeit. They don't believe and follow him. They've been led astray by men. Men. Five men in Brooklyn. Five men in Brooklyn, New York guys. You know, look up the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're into military arms. They're into military arms. They're into financing movies. They're into all kinds of evil guys. That's, that's how you know they're not of God. They're an established, organized religion. Organized religion is man-made. It is under the power of dark spirits. Put your faith in Jesus where there is no demonic influence. Jesus is true, his word is true, and if you stay true to his word you can't be overcome by devils and demons. Because you test everything by his word. But if you are overcome by devils and demons, you'll be led astray and you'll be going into false churches and false religion. And you'll be, you'll be called, in the, in the eyes of God, you're called the falling away. That's what God calls you. God calls you the falling away. You've got to trust in God, believe in God. You've got to stay faithful and committed and obedient to God. You have to be testing everything by God's Bible, God's Word. That's how you know you're not deceived. You can easily be deceived by men that come thinking they're of God, but you have to test them. You have to test what they believe, what they say. You have to look at their prophecies. You have to look at the things they proclaimed and said. If one, if one thing is false, if, if their organization just says one thing that's false and doesn't come true, then they're false. They're false prophets. You know, you have to test everything, guys. If you don't test the, the things, you're going to be deceived. Because the devil, he deceives people through religious systems. That's how he deceives you. But if you put your faith in Jesus, you'll never be deceived, guys, because God will speak to you. God will teach you. The Holy Spirit, when God gives it to you, will teach you. You'll know all things because God is teaching you. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches you. Do you understand, guys? You know what I say is true because I don't say it for myself. I look to the Scriptures and the Scriptures, they say it. The scriptures are true. That's my foundation. That's my, that's my truth. I go to the scriptures. That's how I'm able to see through liars and deceivers. Because I trust God's word over man, over religious systems. Religious systems. More, more religious systems killed children of God than anybody. Do you know that? It's the religious orders and the religious systems of this world that have put God's children to death. Put your faith in Jesus. Love Jesus. Open up the Bible again to the Word of God because He's coming. Jesus says, I come like a thief in the night to those that are not watching. Jesus says, will I find faith when I return? Jesus says, will I find faith when I return? There you go. That's your heart, isn't it? Give the big finger. That's, that's really the God of our Allah, is it? The big finger. Yeah, that's the typical God of this world. You know, instead of loving, you give the big finger. That's what you do. That's what you do when you're in false religion. You have hate. Hate. It's not hateful to warn your brothers and sisters. It's loving to warn your brother and sister about false religion, organized religion. It's, it's loving to warn them and, 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 and basically give them godly and good counsel when it comes to the false teachers and the liars in this world, and there are many of them. That's, that's how God, that's how, that's how the devil deceives you the most. He'll, put, he'll, he'll give you something that's not true, that's false, so that he can take you and lead you away. You know, you won't be led astray if you follow Jesus, guys, you know? You won't be led astray if you trust in Jesus, if you follow him, if you, if you, if you look to the scriptures, like the Bereans, you know? The Bereans were commended because they went to the scriptures to see if it's true. The Bereans didn't just believe what Paul was speaking to them. They went to the scriptures to see if it be true. And that's what you're to do. You are to test everything by God's word. And I go to the scriptures. And the Bible says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. That's saying Jesus is God. Jehovah's Witnesses, they say, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word is a God. That is wrong and you know it. You know it's wrong. You're trying to say that Jesus is not God. So dangerous, guys. You have to be careful who you yoke to. You have to be careful who you follow. You have to be careful who you yoke to in this world because the devil has many false religions in this world and it's there to take you away from Jesus Christ, guys. They went out from us, but they were never of us because if they were of us, they'd never went out. 
but they went out to prove that they were never of us. Do you get it, guys? They went out from us because they were never of us. And they went out from us because they were exalted and prideful and they thought they knew better. But you have to stay focused and follow Jesus, guys. Follow Jesus Christ and he will save you. He will deliver you. He is, he is the God of the Bible. He is the Son of God. He manifests himself in the flesh. Jesus sat down and ate with Abraham. Jesus said to, to the Pharisees, Before Abraham was, I am. Abraham was happy to see me in my days. That's Jesus speaking to the Pharisees in the New Testament where he talks about, uh, he, he talks about how he knew Abraham in the Old Testament. Jesus said, Abraham was happy to see me in my days. You see, Jesus is, he is, is now and ever, 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 for, forever. He is, he was, is and is to come. Jesus is, he is God guys. And people, they don't understand because they don't study. They don't meditate, study. They don't examine the words of God. They are easily deceived. They're hooked by false people that come in and, and present to them something that is not true. But they present it to them in a way that deceives them and tricks them. That's what it is. That's how the devil deceives. He comes with, with all of these false practices and these false teachings. But really it's not of God. You know it. Because it goes against what God says guys. You have to be born again. Jesus spoke to Nicodemus and said, you, know, you have to be born of the spirit and water. You come out of your mother's womb, you come out in a puddle of water, guys. And then you, you need to be baptized by Jesus because he baptizes you in the spirit because you need to have that second birth. It's a spiritual birth, guys. It's when God delivers you from evil and puts his Holy Spirit within you. That's what it is to be born again, guys. That's what it is to, to truly to be saved. It's when God's Holy Spirit dwells within you. So put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. He is, he is perfect in every way and he will always guide you and lead you into truth. But unfortunately, the devil has many organizations in this world that lead you astray. And you trust and you follow Jesus and you will not be led astray, guys. You trust and follow Jesus and he will guide you and lead you in, into light, into, into heaven, into, into the kingdom of heaven, guys. Jesus is light. Please, understand and know. So many people have fallen away. So many people have been deceived. So many people have been tricked and deceived by the devil because they do not understand and they do not read their Bible. They don't meditate on the word. They don't study. They don't get deep into the word of God. They are easily overcome by liars and deceivers. And it's sad. It's sad that so many people that have a love and have a desire to serve God, but they serve God through false religions. And it's really upsetting and sad how they can be tricked and deceived. All you have to do, guys, is read the book of Galatians and you'll see that you cannot be saved in your works. Your works don't save you. It's through the anointing of the Holy Spirit because God dwells in you. And if God dwells in you, God does the work in you. You see, this is why when you're in heaven, you throw your crowns back at Jesus. You throw your crowns, you take off your crown and you throw it back at Jesus. Because he did all the work, guys. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within you that gets you to do the powerful work that God has fulfilled. He's commissioned you with this work and you will do that work because he has set aside works for you to do. But the work that he set aside for you to do is done through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you don't take glory in it. You don't take pride in your work because you know God is doing the work in you. But you speak to other organizations and they take pride and pleasure in their works, guys. So trust in Jesus and believe in him. He is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life, guys. My people are perishing through lack of knowledge, guys. I love the Old Testament. I read the Old Testament. I love it. I read the Old Testament. I, t I just love the Old Testament because there's so much goodness in the Old Testament. You learn by the mistakes of the prophets of old. The prophets of old, they turned to Asherah. They turned to Baal. They turned to Moloch. 
They turned to the Babylonian gods. They worshipped and sacrificed their children unto pagan gods. And you learn from the Old Testament not to be conformed to anything that has Babylon, Babylon on it. And the Bible says in Revelation 17 and 18, uh, 17 and 18 that Mystery Babylon, Mystery Babylon is that whore, that counterfeit whore, where all the false religions come underneath it, guys. Mystery Babylon is the counterfeit, the counterfeit to the truth. The truth is Jesus Christ, guys. Jesus is true. Jesus is true. And the whore is a liar. And when the whore unites everything, when the whore brings together Roman Catholicism, when the whore brings together Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, when the whore brings Mormonism, when the whore brings Je Jehovah's Witnesses, when the whore brings Seventh-day Adventists, when the whore brings Catholicism, when the whore brings Satanism, when the whore brings Buddhism, when the whore of Babylon brings all religion together, you are deceived by the Antichrist system. Because Jesus is separate from that. He is separate from that. God does not yoke himself with false religion. God says to expose the deeds of darkness. God says to expose the liars and the deceivers. Expose the liars and deceivers, guys. You see, God is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. You have to stand on God's word. You have to believe in God's word. God doesn't lie to you, but men, women, people in this world, under the powers of false religion, lie to you. Your salvation is important, but you follow Jesus, guys. You read that Bible, meditate on the Bible, you get into your prayer closet, you cry out and repent to your Father, say sorry for your sins, you say sorry for the way you live your life, you believe in Jesus, believe in your heart, believe what he did on the cross, believe in his death, burial and resurrection, believe it enough to mean it, believe it so that you're willing and you're, you're going to make the effort, that you're going to truly pick up your cross and, and deny yourself, that's what it is to believe. Believing is more than just saying it guys, believing is that you have to carry it out guys. You have to carry it out. You have to do what your father says. The Bible says not to be a hearer of the word, but be a doer. So you have to do what God says through his instructions. His commandments and his instructions are there for a reason. They're there for a reason. That's how you get saved, by obeying him, believing in him, following him. If you, don't, if you disregard God's commandments and his instructions, you'll get led astray into false religion. But if you stand strong on God's commandments and his instructions, you'll stand strong in Christ Jesus because God knows that you're faithful. Do you know what it is to be faithful? There's many examples in the Bible. You know, in the Bible there's an example where the, the father says to the son, will you go and feed the, the cattle? Will you go and feed the cows and the livestock? And he says, Father, I will go. He goes to the other son and he says, Son, will you feed the livestock? Will you go and feed the animals? And he says, I won't go. And so the scenario plays out that the son that said he would go, he didn't end up going. And the son that said he wouldn't go, he went, he went and did. You see, many people will say they're not going to believe, they won't go, they won't do. And then they, they end up doing it. The people that are proclaiming they know everything. The people that say, I know, they are the ones that are deceived. Jesus said, if you say you can see, you're blind. But you, if you say you're blind, then he sees your humbleness. And then he'll open your eyes so that you're able to see. You see, a man that comes in humbleness and says, I'm a sinner, recognizes that he needs a savior, knows that he doesn't know things, that he's blind, then God will open your eyes and remove the scales and you'll be able to see spiritually the things of God. But when you come and you say, I can see, then you become blind, guys. Do you understand? Jesus is good. Jesus is my king. He's my Lord and Savior. He's the king of kings, guys. Jesus. The Bible says that every knee will bow, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess Jesus to the Lord. Every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess Jesus to the Lord. Guys, JWs, God bless you. I pray that God will open your eyes. Father God, Father God, open their eyes. They are humble. They look, ni they look nice people. Please, Father God, open their eyes. I don't hate you. I know you're in a false religion. Father God, please open their eyes. It's a false religion. Are you taking anything at all? Uh, no, I'm not. No, it's you not. It was just changed from a drink. That's it. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, bless you, man. God bless you, buddy. Yeah. Please, guys, you know, come to Jesus. Please read and meditate on the Bible. Please start reading it for yourself. Don't listen to people. People can lie. People can, can translate God's word in the wrong way. Come
come to Jesus. Ask God to give you the Holy Spirit. Ask God to teach you. That's what te God teaches you the Bible. Not men. Men always corrupt the Bible. They always counter. They always give you error and, and false teaching. But come to Jesus, and Jesus will not give you false teaching. Please, guys. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You know it. God is good. God's in the hearts of people. But many people, they don't listen. They don't listen to his instruction. They don't listen to his discipline. They don't listen to God when he's disciplining you. So he turns you over. The Bible says he turns you over to a reprobate mind. God turns you over to a reprobate mind because you are stubborn, stiff-necked and rebellious. So he turns you over to the devil. So now you're in the devil. You need to get saved. You need to be saved. You need to come to God in humbleness. You need to cry out and say sorry. You need to say, Father God, I am sorry, I am, I am deserving of hell, please forgive me. Father God, please help me, I want to be saved. Be humble to God, your Father, and believe in Jesus. See, say to Father, please, I, I want to believe, help me with my belief. Please help me with my belief. And God will see your heart. And if that heart is genuine, if the heart is open, if the heart has got a love for God and is desiring to know, then God will reveal himself, because God is good, guys. God doesn't want to stay away from you, God wants to draw close to you. God wants to be your God. He wants you to be his people. So love him, obey him and follow him, Jesus. He's the king. He is. You know it. You know that Jesus is life. You know that he's the only way. So trust and believe in him, guys. Choose Jesus. Choose Jesus. That's who you should choose. You know, God bless you. Oh yeah, God bless. Yeah. Do you want to trap? Uh, not really. I just went and got a drink. I got a drink, and that's just a change from the drink. Put your faith in Jesus. Oh yeah, you can take that. Not bad. Is this eczema or something? I shake my head. I think you do it. Lord Jesus Christ is what I want to take Oh, yeah, we do. We do. Oh, not that kind of olive oil. Olive oil is good. Olive oil is good for your head. It's not. Oh, the Bible says when you fast, you are Olive oil? Yeah. My olive oil might be. I couldn't say the olive oil is not. I don't know right now. The oil with perfume that we have in the sun. I always put olive oil. I've been washing water for the last 14 weeks and lemon. Organic lemon and lemon. That's good. It's nice, fresh, you know, tea. instead of all those chemicals it, in I soaps. Period, so yeah, all right, okay. Then. That's really fresh. Cool, all right. All right, keep reading the Bible, God bless you. Sorry? Matthew 10, verse 5 and 6. What does it say? Let me see. It said that Jesus is before he said to his disciples, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritans, go to yeah, the south of Israel. Well, that was a different dispensation. Uh, next one is Matthew 15. That was a dispensation. Wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, what happens when you get to wait, Paul? Wait, let me, let me come now. When you get to Paul? Wait now. Okay. Wait, oh. Matthew 15, 24. It says, I was only sent to the Lord's sheep in the house of Israel. Again, that's the Old Testament. Oh, it's not Old Testament, it's, it's, it's the New Testament. It's really the Old Testament. Matthew 15, 24. And the New Testament doesn't really start until after Acts. You don't know the... I do, yeah. I know that the Old Testament. I know, I know, I know it's not. I don't think you do. Yes, I do. What, what are you saying that? John we should Ford, Are you saying we shouldn't preach to the Gentiles? What I'm saying to you, John 4, 22. When the Samaritan woman had the, the discourse with Jesus, please be funny. Yeah. What did she say when we go to the world? Are you a Christian or a Muslim? I'm a Muslim. So if you're trying to tell me about the Bible, I think that's really... I would never try to tell you about your Quran, no, but, but you, you, you don't know the Bible. About, no, you can't you don't know the Bible. No, because what I'm saying to you... But you don't understand because you don't have the Spirit of God in you. We as a Muslims reject Jesus as the Savior of the world. Did Jesus die on the cross? Did Jesus die on the cross? He what? Yes, he did. There you go. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. No way. I'm not. I'm not going to discuss it. I'm not going to even have a dialogue with you. You are saying Jesus didn't die on the cross. I'm here telling you the only gospel, the only truth is that Jesus did die on the cross. If Jesus didn't die on the cross, then we are all doomed. No, no, you're false. You're false. You're a Muslim telling me that Jesus didn't die on the cross. I am a man of God following Jesus. I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. No, they're all denominations. I'm a follower of Jesus. Have you ever heard of a born again Christian? Follower of Jesus. Is, no, they're not. No, they're not because they reject Jesus. How can you say you follow Jesus when you don't believe he died on the cross? Please. 
I don't understand it. He's telling me he's a follower of Jesus, but he doesn't believe Jesus died on the cross. No, no, Jesus, your Jesus is an antichrist Jesus. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. You see, the reason Jesus came to the world was to save sinners. You see? No, you did. You fell away. You fell away from the faith. You allowed an evil religion to come along and to steal you away. Solomon, Solomon was a man of God at the early age, but what happened at the, uh, at the end of his age? He fell away because he allowed his wives to pervert his and corrupt his conscience. Can you ask me one question, please? I used to be back in the church. I was about you to fell away. Pastor in churches. Yeah, so yeah, that's I not real churches. Churches are not made with bricks and mortar. Churches are when God puts his spirit in you. That's a real church. You see, you are deceived by buildings. Jesus said that, he says there's coming a day when you'll worship God in spirit and truth. Where you no longer need the building because God knows the buildings can be corrupted by people like yourself that come in and teach lies. So, God says, I will put my Holy Spirit in you and you become a walking church. That's what a real church is. A real church is when you are filled with God's Holy Spirit. John chapter 1 verse 19 to verse 21. Do you know? Speak it. Listen, I don't memorize the scriptures. Well, I, I'll check it. No, you don't. You don't because you don't believe. Look, you, you've just literally denied Jesus. You deny he died on the cross. You deny he, that he rose from the dead. How can you say you know Jesus? You cannot say you know my God. My God is the God of Israel. Amen. Is your God the God of Israel? Well, my God identifies himself as the God of Israel. Does your, uh, your, is your God the God of Israel? Because mine is, because mine is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Is your God the God of Israel? You can't say it because you have a different God. Amen. Amen. Allah just means God, and that just means God. Do you know that there's loads of gods in the Old Testament? So which one are you under? Which one do you follow? Well, the Creator has a son. The Creator has a son. In Matthew, in Matthew, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and God says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. See, you can't have a debate, you can't have a discussion. You can't have a discussion. No, how can a, you've got an antichrist spirit in you? You've got an antichrist spirit in you. How can Satan be in me? How can it, do, you, do you know that God says that some people are never going to believe in me? Some people will never believe in me. Some people will never believe in me. Some people will never believe in me. Believe in me. Trust in Jesus, guys. You, uh, you, can't say, you can't say that you believe in Jesus and then when I say, oh, okay, you believe in Jesus, amen. And when I say, did Jesus die on the cross? You go, no, he didn't. That's the whole principle of the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus died on the cross, he was buried in the tomb for three days, and he rose from the dead, guys. No? Just leave him. It's okay. There's no arguments, guys. There's no arguments. We're having discussion. You don't need to get involved. If you come on over here to stir it up, it's okay. There's a discussion going on. That's okay. People can discuss, but I don't really want to speak. Well, I don't know, but I'm, I'm guessing you're curious to know what was going on. Are you a... Uh, who are you? Do you do you love Jesus or are you a Christian? Okay, well I preach you to the world. I'm preaching to the world as I'm commanded to do. And when the devil comes up through people that hate God, they're going to say that I don't believe in Jesus. But they'll come up to you and they'll say, I believe in Jesus. How can someone say they believe in Jesus but then straight away say he didn't die on the cross? He didn't... he wasn't risen, he wasn't risen from the dead. Do you know that that is ridiculous? Do you really think a Christian that is born again is going to stand and listen to that? If you say you really believe in Jesus, people of Islam, then believe that he died on the cross, that he rose from the dead, and that he is now with the Father in heaven. And that he lives and dwells in everybody that believes. you got to believe in the gospel. If you are ashamed and embarrassed of the gospel, then so be it. Oh, I'm not. I'm strong in my faith. I don't let anybody sway me. What I do is, what I do is I rebuke them. I rebuke them. I shame them. Because the Bible says you have to stand for the faith and not be intimidated. Stand on your faith. Jesus is King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Don't let anybody tell you that he isn't. Because he is. Jesus is God. Jesus is amazing. Jesus gave you life. Jesus put the Spirit in you. And without Jesus putting the Spirit in you, you wouldn't be living. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. 
look at the nosy people. Nosy people love to be nosy. They love to sit around and criticize and poke their fingers and get into conversations that don't concern them. Trust in Jesus, guys. I will not stand and debate with Muslims. I will speak to you if you're if you're humble. But if you do not want to if, if you don't want to receive God's words, then that's fine. Then do what do what the Bible says, go in peace. But I am not going to agree with your lies. I stand for Jesus, he is the King of Kings. The Bible says in Matthew 28, all power and authority has been given to the Son, Jesus Christ, in heaven and on earth. There's nothing on this earth that's more important than the Son of God. God says to obey and honor my Son. If you come and you do not honor the Son and you say that he did not do what he did, Jesus rebuked you. Do you know what Jesus did? Peter said to Jesus when he was alive, you're surely not going to go into Jerusalem and give your life. What did Jesus say to Peter? Get behind me, you devil. That's what Jesus said to Peter. He rebuked him immediately. And I rebuke anybody that says evils and lies. I stand on the truth. I stand for Jesus. I am not afraid to stand on the truth because the truth sets you free. If you get intimidated and bullied and you get deceived by false religion, guys, it's on you. Jesus is truth. You have to stand strong in your faith because in the last days, God is going to allow different faiths and different religions to come into the world. God is going to allow different faiths and religions to come into the world to test your obedience and your faith and your loyalty. That's what God is allowing. God allows different cultures, nationalities to come in with their different faiths so that he would test you to see that you stay faithful to him. If you stay faithful to him, amen. But if you are swayed and tricked by the devil and you go and you depart from the living God, then so be it. You're a fool to do it. Because only a fool says in his heart there is no God. And we know that the Godhead consists of Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. It's called the Godhead. It's called the Godhead in the Bible. That's what it's called. The Godhead is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And all three are one, guys, because they're all in agreement. They're all perfectly in agreement. They're one in nature. Oh, I love you guys. I love you, Brixton. God bless you. I don't have any hate for anybody, but I'm not going to tolerate lies. I'm not going to tolerate false religion and organized religion. I won't tolerate false prophets. I speak the truth. I speak the truth in love. Because Jesus wants everybody to go to the kingdom of heaven. He doesn't want people to be deceived in false religion. He wants you to trust and believe in him. He says to have faith like a child. A child believes because when you tell a child, they believe. They don't question. They don't doubt. They believe. <laughs> Trust in Jesus, guys. He is the way, the truth, and the life. God bless you, Brixton. Oh. <laughs> Can't have a debate with those guys. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I think. Pray for these people, you know, people of Brixton. I love the people of Brixton, but I won't tolerate false teachers. I won't tolerate people coming and trying to, you know, tell you lies. I won't go to a mechanic, guys, and try to advise a mechanic when he knows a car inside out. Don't try and come to a man of God and then try and tell him how, how he's wrong about his Bible. You know, it's ridiculous and it's foolish. You just, you're going to get rebuked, guys. You know, trust in Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and life. God bless you, guys. Well, no, that's true. I don't have a problem. Yeah, you know what? I, I won't ever go to the point of violence, yeah. but I will review.